We've talked a lot about this. Historians have pointed it out. Uh, futurists have predicted it. Mathematicians have confirmed it. We are headed towards some type of singularity or a cascade of singularity type events where uh, time is basically accelerated, developments uh, are exponential. And we're in the middle of that acceleration right now. Make no mistake. I mean, we have thousands of emails now a day. It's exponential. My prediction of two weeks ago was correct. When I blew up at Assange and I said, you better start exponentially releasing this because there won't be time. That's exactly what he did. And it is now gone from every week to every three days, to every two days, to every day. There's no way Hillary will survive this, even if she steals the election and gets in. She's been wrecked. She's been defeated. She's been torn to pieces. Even MSM now understands that. But they want to be able to hoax the public that stealing the election is a referendum against anti-globalism and, and uh, against nationalism. It's not going to work. I've been listening to NPR local, NPR national. I've been reading the New York Times. I mean, they have gone full Decepticon. I mean, it is incredible to watch them burn themselves down. Uh, it's been reported that upwards of $20 million in a new ad buy has been allotted for an ad featuring myself and saying Donald Trump is just talking points from us and taking things I've said out of context. This is like them running ads of him out of context saying, you know, all illegals uh, are, are, are all Mexicans or criminals, which he didn't say. It blows up in their face if he doesn't apologize. And if he goes in there Wednesday at this final debate, the final showdown, and savages her from head to toe, up one side and down the other, he will win. Big time. I don't care how big a theft they're involved in. And, and by the way, Newt Gingrich a little bit of inside baseball out. I don't like Newt Gingrich because I know he is has been a globalist. I know he's extremely smart. I know he knows basically everything that's going on. And he, I've seen him do some double crossing. That said, when he tells the truth, nobody does it better. And I've got a clip of him yesterday on CNN, it is just veritas over the top, which is why it makes me dislike him so much when I know he's being deceptive. Because a lot of these Decepticons are, are not very good at it, and it, it's, it's almost entertaining. When Genrich does it, it's not fun because he does it so well. But he just, in seven minutes, I've got to air the whole thing. It's totally true. I mean, it's perfectly said. Down to Trump winning by 15 points. That's a little slip on Trump internal polling which they don't want the, the general public to be too optimistic because they know they're planning to steal it. They want everybody to go vote, but he's 10, 15 points ahead in the battleground states, folks. This sex thing didn't even hurt him. He, he went up at, at last week's debate. That's why Trump says we're winning. They're freaking out getting ready to steal it because they've got all these fake polls where they sample way more Democrats saying he's going to lose. They're getting everybody ready, folks. They're getting everybody ready for a theft, and Trump's not going to stand for it. Now only 21 days, you can cut the tension with a knife. The Clinton campaign has announced a new ad buy upwards of $20 million, targeting yours truly, and of course Donald Trump, using InfoWars and our statements they believe uh, out, of, out of context to deceive the viewers and listeners in this country. It will only blow up in their face, and Trump has responded obviously by tweeting InfoWars and President Planet articles uh, out today. Uh, showing that uh, it's all about loyalty in the foxhole, something these backstabbers know nothing about. But she's sending out emails to everyone. New video, this is Alex Jones. This is who Donald Trump listens to. Now, you, you have to understand something. They're social engineers, and they know, and they write books about this. They, they brag about this over and over again that they're trying to move the Overton window. And the Overton window is a psychological, historical term developed what in the 50s of what is seen as basic and normal and right. And if you want to change, let's say, the nuclear family being seen as what we should aim for as the standard, you begin to introduce ideas that are so radical it drags you away from what was normally uh, seen as kosher. And folks trying to move the Overton window do things that look like they're way out in space and don't make sense to attempt to drag it from the normalcy into the new paradigm. Now, you could say that's what I do. But you see, I'm just countering the globalists, the radical things they're doing, so I'm not really radical. I'm just reporting on what they're doing, so it sounds 
pretty wild to say there's a secret global treaty that takes over basically everything in our lives called the TPP and it's secret, but then now it's been ratified globally, it's been made public, and it's worse than I said. Because we had previous versions of other treaties that had failed. We knew it was a hodgepodge of those. We knew exactly what it was. And sure enough, it came out and it was exactly what we said it was. So see, we're not engaged in social engineering trying to pull you towards some radicalism. We're trying to point out how the whole process is working. And then it does sound pretty wild what we're covering and what we're saying. Like, Hillary plans to use executive orders to take your guns. What's in the new WikiLeaks? She's going to use executive orders to take your guns. Unidir. The United Nations Small Arms Disarmament Body has been asking presidents for 20 years to use executive orders to sign on to treaties outside of Congress and ban basically all firearms. So when I tell you she wants to take them with an executive order, I know because I already know the blueprint. That's what I keep trying to explain to everybody. 95% of what we cover is on record. Like they misrepresent 9-11 truth. They say, and I'm the founder of it, question it before 9-11, question it on the day of 9-11. I said it's being used to take your freedoms by criminals of the government working with radical Islam, Saudi Arabia, to launch attacks on non-Wahhabi countries like Iraq and take it over. They carry out 9-11. Our media and our government blames the wrong country. We go in and take over Iraq. They're our enemy. Now, they turned that into the talking point from popular mechanics that I believe firefighters blew up the World Trade Center. They actually say that. Never said it. It was the firefighters that came out and exposed that there were bombs in the buildings. Now, do we know exactly who did all this? No. All I'm telling you is the official story you're getting isn't true. And by the way, there isn't a special forces soldier. There isn't a demolitions person. There isn't a architect or engineer I talk to that doesn't concur with that. And I've interviewed the police, two different police officers on air, including a deputy fire chief. That's another person. Leanne McAdoo did. It's got like 5 million views on YouTube. When they told them, there's a countdown, we're going to blow up Building 7. We heard the countdown. And it was coming from the Red Cross. Do you know who the Red Cross is, folks? You know who could go behind enemy lines even 500 years ago out of Switzerland? The Red Cross. And I'm not bashing you if you were in the Red Cross. It has a lot of good things it does. But it is the main global intelligence agency front. So, you want to put this in your ad, Hillary? The Red Cross ran the countdown to blow up Building 7. No one would suspect the Red Cross, would they? So, and when I say Red Cross, I mean intelligence operatives there with the countdown. And then I have the news saying, Building 7 has fallen. Building 7 has fallen. An hour before it fell, CNN and Aaron Brown's turning around and it hadn't fallen. Fell in its own footprint symmetrically from fires. And then 25 minutes later, BBC World, BBC, uh, BBC announced Building 7, the Solomon Brothers building has fallen. And Jane Graham turns around, has it fallen? And later they admitted they were given the, that feed from Reuters that it had fallen. They had jumped the gun. That was the CIA base. Do you know the CIA's main East Coast base uh, outside of Arlington, Virginia? Do you know where it's based? Building 7. They had at least 10 floors of it. Look it up. Look it up. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I can go on for 10 hours. I've made six films on the subject. I've written a book on the subject. It needs to be exposed. It needs to be investigated. Just like our government's funding radical Islam today, it's the very same program. Radical Islam is real. It's being brought into attack us. We need to deal with it. Our borders are wide open. That's the false flag. The jihadis are real. The false flag's bringing them in. Now, before I go any further, we've been vindicated by all the 20, you know, something pages coming out in Congress, the 28 pages, and the fact that Saudi Arabia was there, and there was an order to stand down and not investigate them. And the FBI agents at the time went public. They were ordered to stand down in Texas and in uh, Arizona and in Florida and in Minnesota and in Oklahoma. I interviewed some of them. I interviewed the translators, like Sibel Edmonds, who heard it all, the chatter going on. They were ordered to stand down, and the hijackers were able to carry out their attack. Now, once they got on board, the only real air phone calls that came from stewardesses was there was gas. They were gassed on the planes. I don't know what happened, but I know the official story is a lie. Now, they're going to misrepresent and say, oh, my God, Trump supports this 9-11 truther. Trump is ready for that. Trump knows about 9-11. He brought up Jeb Bush. He brought up they were running security in the World Trade Center. He brought up the Saudi connection. He brought up the Carlisle Group meeting with Bush Sr. 
uh, in D.C. the morning of 9-11 at the same table with them at the Carlisle uh, Weapons uh, quarterly meeting. And that's when you notice Jeb dropped out real fast. So you want to throw Trump uh, in the briar patch, go ahead. That's exactly where he wants to go. You people are walking into our trap again. Thank you. Great job. Now, let me give you the uh, info. Then I want to go to these phone calls and, or, or give the number out, take phone calls, go to all these video clips I've got. Here's what we've got today to cover. We have more and more of the nine Trump sexual assault accusers it turns out inviting him to functions just a few months ago or a year ago or two years ago. Many years after they claim he did this, say, please come to my restaurant. Please come to our event. Sending emails to him. And when he doesn't, then all this stuff comes up. Reality show contestants from a decade ago. And they're saying just a few months ago, please come to our restaurant when you're in town. And then Trump couldn't come to their restaurant when he's in town. So now he grabbed her on an airplane and Gloria Allred, she's gonna save us and the lady's crying. It was so horrible. And then now all these witnesses are coming out and the brothers and the cousins and the sisters are saying none of that happened. And woman after woman we're hearing had a crush on Donald Trump from their families. And then they tell Trump, go into your emails. And then Trump staff goes in and there they are. And the letters, now six of the nine women, it turns out, were begging Trump for TV jobs or begging Trump to take them out to dinner or begging Trump to come to the restaurant or begging, begging, begging. We have this from their families. And that's why I've got to give credit here. And I just continually notice this. I see some bad stuff from them. But overall, if you talk about mainstream old newspaper chain that actually is really classical liberal, and actually tells the truth, other than say something like a Drudge or an InfoWars or a Breitbart, McClatchy. McClatchy just continues to tell the truth. They've got articles out about real election fraud going on uh, against Trump. They've got articles. There are way too many coincidences uh, in assaults on Trump. And they go through this huge article. This is uh, Andrew Malcolm special to McClatchy. And the investigative journalist breaks down how it's synthetic, manufactured, ABC, NBC. While they're attacking Trump, they're the ones calling thousands of women, data mining thousands of women that were on TV shows, you name it. They're getting the info from NBC, his former employer. They're going through, they're going through all the pageants. They are calling thousands of women. And they've come up with nine who the evidence is pointing towards want to be stars, want to get attention, uh, want to be back in the news. And... The problem is when it comes out that just a few months ago or another case a year ago or two years ago, they're asking Trump out on a date. They're asking Trump to come to the restaurant. They're asking Trump to give him a TV show again. And then magically, when Trump doesn't respond, they get scorned. They get mad. They get angry. And this article, I'm going to post the whole thing, Infowars.com. It's that important. There are way too many coincidences on assaults on Trump. And you just need to read this for yourself because it just goes through how the whole thing is scripted. You can see the scripting, how this is all coming out, obviously, with 20-something days out, 21 days now, so they can't respond. All being done by design. Meanwhile, Republican headquarters gets firebombed. CNN and others say they deserve it because they raise the rhetoric and the tone, oh, Trump's so horrible. I'll hear them on NPR call him a racist, a bigot, a sexual assaulter. And then say, we can't believe the Republicans have such mean rhetoric to say the media is against him and it's going to be rigged. Boy, he's dangerous and crazy. But here are the articles. Trump sexual assault accuser sent glowing email to his assistant in April. Summer Zervos, former Apprentice star. Oh, how horrible. He had her on a big hit TV show who alleges she was sexually assaulted by Donald Trump. Sent an email to Trump's assistant in April praising the GOP candidate and asking him to come to their restaurant when he was in town. I'm going to skip the break. Sorry. It's too important. So we have all this going on. And it goes on and on. Woman after woman after woman after woman. We've got the email on screen. I'm certain you are a very busy woman. I'm in a unique situation being that I am the only former apprentice who operates a business where Mr. Trump supporters can walk in, express their admiration for him, and inquire about my experience. Oh, you think you'd find out how great you are, huh? Mr. Trump has a great deal of support, including 
Huntington Beach, California. He has witnessed both my highs and lows operating a small business, and I am pleased to report that my business is good. Sonny's Restaurant has a long history of making people feel special. We hire a diverse crew and embrace anyone who is honest while working hard. How dare him give her all that attention for her restaurant years ago? He's such a bad man. Mr. Trump is cut from the same cloth. Oh, we hire a diverse crew and embrace anyone with an honest while working hard. Oh, honest and working hard. Mr. Trump is cut from the same cloth. He's honest and works hard. I would greatly appreciate reconnecting at this time. He will know my intentions are genuine. Thank you, Summer Zervos. We got a bunch of the same story, other women. Same deal. And then people that were on the plane go, and I remember being on the plane talking to Trump. He wasn't even sitting by that lady. What? On and on, on and on. Little petty garbage. Meanwhile, I'm going to give you the big bombshell right now. I don't even feel like I am up to what you're about to see. I don't even want to present this at the start of the third hour today because I don't think I'm going to even do it justice because they just got back in last night and they've got hours and hours of footage of stuff that is HBO award winning if it was put together right. We have people dying on video in Haiti this was last week. The place looks like a hydrogen bomb went off in Biggs's words. We have UN helicopters flying around everywhere. We have children bleeding to death. We have Gary Haven medevacking them into Port-au-Prince, and the U.N. will give no medical aid. If, if private interests like Haven fly in and, and give food, which he does every week, they will then fly it into the villages, and the people will die without it. Hillary is stealing the money that's supposedly to go to them. Billions now total. That's admitted. Keeps 94-plus percent, and they're saying no aid has come in in years. She's still collecting money. Where's the media? This is so cold-blooded. This is black people. These are people really dying, really in trouble, who've had their infrastructure money and everything stolen. Colonialism over and over again. The Clintons literally launched their huge foundation worth over $2 billion. It's raised over $6 billion. $2 billion from Haiti. They steal almost all of it. The little bit they claim is for the charity, pays for their little junkets and things to Haiti. And even mainstream media, like the Washington Post, admits they did nothing with it. And I'm just saying, wow, nothing on ABC News, nothing on NBC, nothing on NPR. I listened to NPR this morning while I was exercising for about 45 minutes, and it sounded like a joke. Like, like some future authoritarian you know, radio program that was so over the top, it's meant to be satirical. And just the breathlessness over, he's a sexual assaulter. He is an assaulter. He is an assaulter. And then, and then they'd have uh, a guest on after like 15 minutes would go, well, now it hadn't been proven yet. Oh, yes, it's been proven. There's all these women. You don't think sexual assault's a bad thing? What about Hillary coming up for a sexual assault that's real where Bill settled? What about her funding radical jihadis? What about the UN using the water supply? unit that costs more than $15 million and then using it as a toilet to defecate in and then giving the defecation water to the Haitians. It killed more than 10,000. That's admitted by the UN itself. And there's the UN, as usual, sitting around doing nothing with these big, giant white helicopters we've got on video. And there are just Gary Haven and Biggs and Michael Zimmerman trying to video lo loading on these cargo planes, loading people that are dying on. One guy died by the time they got him to the hospital. I mean, that's the kind of stuff we've got on tape. Little kids with broken backs. I mean, and the UN is doing nothing. They won't give anybody any aid, you name it. They're there to make you give them the food aid. And then they fly off with it to do Lord knows what. And where's the Clinton Foundation? They talk to people all over. They go, we've never seen them. They give us nothing. They all know Gary Haven, who for, well, since the, since the earthquake, it's been flying in there at least every month. It's powerful. And Gary Haber's going to join us from Haiti via phone, probably sat phone. Um, and then we're going to have Joe Biggs and Michael Zimmerman in here ahead of uh, 
Roger Stone, who had now concurred, he said the sources are, you called it, Alex, is what he told me last night. He says it's crazy. It looks like their October surprise will be a huge cyber attack, which they've announced on Russia, and then even military incursions in Ukraine to start a war. That way you can really, I guess, cancel the election or divert everybody, uh, you know, with that news while you steal it. I mean, this is such a critical time to be alive right now. But to McClatchy's credit, I, I, anytime I'm looking at mainstream media and something is incisive, something's on target, something is actually well-researched, it's from them. They're the ones that have exposed Warren Buffett getting $400-plus billion of the banker bailout money himself, almost $10 billion, and then running around saying, raise your taxes because he gets the money. See, that's a problem. Trump didn't hit him hard enough. When he said... Buffett takes the same exemptions I do. No, no, he has tax-free foundations, bro, and then sets up dummy corporations and bankrupts them and then gets taxpayer money. He's total criminal in my research view. You have taken some of the loopholes that you have admitted you would get rid of, but until we have a level playing field, you can't or you'll be bankrupt. He's totally honest. He goes, I buy ties from Mexico because they cost a third the price or high quality, and no one wants to buy ties that cost too much. So as soon as we fix these deals, I'll be able to make my ties in America. I have done that myself. Go get a shirt made in America, 10 bucks, sell it for 22. Nobody wants it. They want the one that's 15. You pay for $5. They just won't buy the one made in America. We got all, everything's made in America on one side. Buy the same shirt made in Mexico or Honduras for 15 bucks instead of 22 bucks. You buy it, the one made there. That's your choice. You did it. And I don't blame you. The point is we have unfair trade deals. And as someone trying to operate a real business to fund this liberty movement, I've been sitting in the very same seat Trump is. Anybody else who's run a business knows that. The problem is most Americans are disconnected. And I, you know, more and more when I see somebody driving in the fast lane, 55 miles an hour in a 70, I'll pull up and look, and they've always got an education sticker. They're always a professor, or they've got a Hillary sticker or a Bernie sticker. And I saw a guy this morning. I was late to work. I was almost out of gas. I pulled over. And as I pull in, this guy pulls in front of me and parks right in the middle between the pumps where I couldn't hardly pull in. I saw the education sticker. He got out. He got mad because he could barely get out of his car. And I said, hey, how you doing? And he's like, he, he ignores me, walks around because he's too much of a god. And I couldn't help it. I didn't pull my iPhone out and tape it. But I looked at him and I said, who are you supporting in the election? And he looked at me and he looked down and he goes, why? And I said, I'm just asking he said, well, Hillary, of course. And I just should have videotaped it because who else every time parks in the middle between the two gas pumps where someone else can't get gas? These people, it's their religion to drive 55 and a 70. It's their religion to block your way. They're unhappy energy vampires. They're demons. And it's time to exercise the entire nation of these people. And when I say that, that's a figure of speech. I mean, we need to understand who they are. And they get these little clubs of, of, of rats. They all hate each other. They're all dishonorable. They're all incredibly unhappy. Uh, I mean, I've been inside NPR, I guess, several times, locally and nationally. It is the most soulless, unhappy, empty group. CNN, the same thing. They are pathetic. And they know they are. But there he was, just because I'm already pulling in. He pulls in. And there's a car parked here, and I see him on this side, so I'm not going to park here because there's two pumps, but I'm not going to park here because I'm trying to be nice, so I go, mm, I'll just go over here. And he just stops right in the middle. And I went, you know, I'm late. I'm just going to squeeze in here. I can barely get out up against the gas tank, scratch my car, you know, up against the pump, go up. He's looking at me. He can barely get out. He, <laughs> I think I already bumped my other door. I'm like, whatever, I don't care. He looks so pissed. It's like, dude, you just thought you'd have a little power over me. You look back, you saw me, you thought you'd piss on me. Didn't happen, did it, boy? And the point is, is that I know who you are. I knew who you were. I analyzed and assessed you in seconds, but I confirmed it. You're probably a community college professor. You're still huge in massive debt. You hope the government gets you out. He was like 65. You think that's your mommy and your daddy. You hate prosperity, and all you can do is piss on Texans because you came here from California. You've already collapsed. All right, I'm going to get to all the huge news, incredible clips, and so much more straight ahead. The latest on WikiLeaks as well. Stay with us. All right, let me give you a preview of what's coming up. I just talked to Gary Haven during the break. 
He is delivering emergency food and got behind schedule. He's going to be in the air when he's supposed to be on with us, and that's fine. I want to move it to tomorrow or Wednesday because I want to get these videos together. They just got back last night on a cargo plane to Houston and then drove into Austin. We have got all this footage of dead and dying children. I mean, it's just unbelievably powerful. Um, we've got the Haitians in riot mode against the Clintons, who they know stole almost all the money that they would have gotten when the original uh, catastrophe hit them, the earthquake. And so I don't want to just, we have so much big breaking news, we just kind of release it without any fanfare. I want to have articles written on this. I want to have the videos prepared. I'll voice it today. And then we can have Joe Biggs and um, Michael Zimmerman, who were witnesses to all this and part of it, in here with us when Haven's on. So I wanted to do the big official breakdown Wednesday, but let's just get Haven on tomorrow and then also Wednesday continue. We hate Hillary. Haitians at Democratic National Convention say Hillary Clinton belongs in jail. Wait till you actually go to Haiti. Something I wish Donald Trump would have done. But InfoWars has done it. And I've donated. I'm not bragging to the aid mission, but that's just what we're doing here because, you know, I'm a evil white man. But the point is, is that Hillary and uh, Obama and all these people, along with uh, Bill, have, have been milking Haiti, robbing it. Oh, yeah, the, the Obamas have been involved as well, uh, you know, promoting the whole scam. And it goes in the Clinton Foundation. It goes right back to them. This is a giant money laundering operation, and it's truly sickening. And Gary Haven in the videos makes some really powerful points. But we've got riots on video, you name it. But even Politico magazine, the Clintons, Haiti screw up, as told by Hillary's emails. It's their own daughter saying, people are dying. What are you doing? <sighs> Libya's not a screw up. Haiti's not a screw up. The derivative scam they created is not a screw up. All of this is on purpose. They're organized criminals that have gotten away with murder. Now, I'm going to get into all the news here, and there is a ton of it on the polls, on the attacks on Trump, uh, on the latest in these WikiLeaks. There is just so much here. Michael Savage is joining us tomorrow. It was already scheduled last week. I'm so excited about this because this is the perfect time to have him. I knew it five, six years ago when he got banned, along with thousands of others, but he was the most prominent, from flying into the U.K. by the prime minister that they were going to set up a no-fly for what they call people that are radicals or, or people that uh, you know, promote anti-UN stuff. Just like you see people getting arrested in Germany uh, for criticizing open borders. And Facebook's working with them. That's the model. And I knew, just like that they want a no-gun buy list, they just magically put you on it, you can't buy guns, and then now you can't fly. I knew that was part of a precedent. Globally, they were beta testing, because it always is. We have the WikiLeaks. Roll Net Daily, Sharia Law, Hillary kept Savage on hate list. She's, it's all there, exactly what we said it was, because it's kind of like when a jigsaw puzzle, you've already, say it's got 200 pieces, and you've already put, say, 190 in. The last 10, I mean, you know where they go. You go, oh, that's the, that's the parrot's eye. Yep, parrot's eye. Oh, that's the parrot's foot. That's a branch the parrot's sitting on. We're putting the last pieces in. This is not hard. We know exactly what they're going to do. And they have totally pre-prepped everybody for war with Russia, physical war. They're trying to get a no-fly zone. They're trying to get the military to develop a plan. This is public, to start shooting down Russian aircraft. That'll start World War III. Don't believe me, I'll play General Dumford. I played it probably 20 times. We played again from two weeks ago. Cue up Dumford, please. How about the Secretary of the Army saying the same thing? How about the Russian president? You've got international criminals that have taken this country over. They're trying to start a big war 21 days out from the election. And jo Joe Biden said it last Wednesday. It's when they taped it. They put out the short clip Sunday. He said even more yesterday, we're going to hit Russia so hard. They never know what's going to hit them. And then if Russia responds, they'll call it a cyber war. And then they can say, oh, the Russians are involved in the election. Or they can launch a false flag and, and frame the Russians. I mean, you can see this coming a mile away. A few months ago, I said, what false flags might they pull? Economic collapse, Deutsche Bank's about to go under. That's happening naturally. Uh, bigger than Lehman Brothers, 50-fold probably. Some estimates are higher. Uh, you've got all this other military stuff going on in Syria. Uh, you've got them spending billions to get Black Lives Matter turned into like a national communist movement whose mission they admit is to burn down 
buildings and kill police. They well, All you've seen is probing by the Soros uh, destabilization brigades. They lit Ukraine on fire in one day. And it was the same thing where the attacks were very small for several years in probing attacks to condition the police and military to not think it was a big deal when the big one came. That's a classic standard tactic. It was executed for a year before the Panama invasion uh, in uh, the late 1980s, 89. Where for a year, they do touch and go with helicopters, flashbangs, fire machine guns, until when the real attack came, the Panamanian military, which was uh, known for not being cowards, put it to you that way, uh, just stood down for 20 minutes. And by the time they stood down for 20 minutes, those uh, gunships, Puff the Magic Dragon, C-130s, had just annihilated everything. They had uh, drones with particle beams frying people. I mean, it was a lot of fun. That's been partially declassified. And so, yeah, they had particle beams mounted on C-130s in the late 80s. Imagine what they got now. But it doesn't matter if we've got all these super weapons. The Russians have got a bunch of hypersonic cruise missiles, long-range missiles, medium-range missiles, nuclear submarines, you name it. It, it, it. There's tens of thousands of weapons on both sides. You don't win this war, but they're... Pushing it because Hillary never loses. When she's representing child molesters, she wins. When she's robbing little old ladies' bank accounts and, and, and Arkansas swindles at Whitewater, she gets away with it. When she's killing her boyfriend, she gets away with it. When she's deleting her emails and funding Al-Qaeda and ISIS, she gets away with it. When she's selling tainted blood out of the Arkansas blood banks to hemophiliacs worldwide, over 100,000 died conservatively. It came out in court. She gets away with it. And they firebomb the hemophiliac society in Canada. The same night, they did the same thing to the doctor that was working in the hospital uh, off of the prison that first exposed it. I had the guy on, by the way. I called him out a month later, so we come back on. He said, you didn't know we got broken into and firebombed? They said, they're going to kill my kids now. I'm done. I call the Hemophiliac Society, same thing, Canada, hit the same night. These are really, really nice people. Hillary came, she saw, the little kids died. And here's the entire media structure hooking their wagon up to this witch. We're in the hands of evil right now. Now, speaking of funding our operation, it's essential to fund our operation, obviously, in this, in this storm, in this tempest we're in, all of us together. And the more funds we get, the more we're able to sustain what we're doing and hopefully expand and get a few more camera people and editors and reporters. We need to get too deep here. We don't have a second string. We're trying to develop it. And we're ending today knockout, which is nine different compounds from valerian root to L-tryptophan to melatonin that give you healthful, deep, restful sleep. It's $14.95. Normally, the same strength bottle with just melatonin. Is 1995. This has got eight other ingredients. It really is an amazing deal. Knockout available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. Now, this week's new special, this special is ending today, but for the next week, uh, we have a mega special. Get Brain Force for a massive 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Similar new trail picks are already like 80 bucks, ladies and gentlemen. This one's normally $39.95. It's now $22. Because it's already discounted off of the regular price. And we discounted another 25%. And it is the known nootropic, an incredibly low price, super high quality, Brain Force available at InfoWarsLife.com. Brain Force already has hundreds of five-star reviews. And you can read for yourself at InfoWarsLife.com along with all of the research and other information. Even the crew here at InfoWars can't stop taking Brain Force. And now it helps them double their efforts. Secure your brain force for 25% off all supplies last. And I also want to add, that's key, because we've got another shipment coming in. It's scheduled at the end of the month. Uh, and so it looks like this is going to sell out probably in the next week at this price. And it's the last run ever. Get your third edition, final edition, of Hillary for Prison shirt with Legalized Freedom, InfoWars.com on the back. When these sell out, that's it. And there's the other limited edition, Lock Her Up, Made in America shirt, $22. And it's got uh, on the front the Gadsden snake coiling up around Hitlery. And your purchases fund this operation. Also, we're selling Hillary for Prison bumper stickers in packets of uh, 10 up to 100 at cost. Hillary for Prison 2016. All orders get a few thrown in. 
uh, but it sends up the shipping cost too much for you, so we uh, don't uh, don't uh, you know throw a hundred in as I would do. But if you pay seventeen dollars, you get a hundred, and so on. That is at cost infowarslife dot com, or call toll free eight 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 two five three. 3139. This is a powerful information warfare weapon, especially if you're in a battleground state. Also, wear shirts, red shirts on Election Day just to have a visual cue to show everybody just how many Trump voters there were out there. Because here's the deal, and I'm getting to this in a moment. They're, they're moving to steal the election. I was listening to NPR again this morning, and it was NPR National, Rockefeller Radio. I mean, you're talking New World Order. You want to hear talking points out of their mouth? This is it. And they're like, it's totally insane. He claims there's election fraud, that there's evidence of it with no proof. You know, he's giving proof in New York, the head of elections saying they have people voting over and over again for Democrats. It's happening in Florida. All this information is coming out. Election fraud is famous. But Obama says it doesn't exist, but then federalizes elections to stop imminent Russian fraud for Trump. So the Russians are trying to cheat for Trump. Crazy conspiracy theory. But the Democratic machine caught stealing the 1960 election in Illinois and in Texas, certified, admitted, all historians admit, all the other election frauds we know of. No, 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 no. Certified election fraud a few years ago in Ohio. Thousands of other cases around the country locally. But no, 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 he's insane. And then five minutes later, they reported on Homeland Security taking over the elections to stop the Russians from stealing it. So it's crazy. It doesn't exist. Trump's a nut. Not the next story, but one story over is, I mean, folks, they're deliberately trying to scramble the common sense thinking of their listeners. I mean, this is on purpose to just break their minds. This is so incredible. They will not run with six of the nine women that they'd sent him emails recently and asked for jobs or asked for him to come to their business or ask, and said how great he was. And we only know this because their family members are flipping out going, Donald Trump really helped her. Donald Trump did this. Donald Trump gave her a TV show. Donald Trump, you know, blah, blah, blah. She loved Donald Trump. She never said any of this to us. And they go, oh, really? And they go check their emails because the families are giving them, you know, here's my sister's email. Check it. And they check, oh, a year ago, you were loving Donald Trump. Six months ago, you were loving Donald Trump. Two months ago, you were loving Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, you're so honest and wonderful. Thank you so much. You already helped my business so much on The Apprentice Show. Do you mind when you're in California next coming back by it? Sorry, we're real busy with the schedule. We can't come by. Oh, really? Oh, you grabbed me then. They will not tell you because they're in a war. I have a clip of Cuomo, this storied family out of New York. I mean, give me a, you know, you know, Mr. Carleone. On CNN saying it's illegal for you to look at, look at WikiLeaks, you must go through us. You're only allowed to look at it if we say so. I mean, they talk to their viewers like they're three. Now, you're not allowed to go outside without mommy letting you. Is that clear? Or I'll get a wooden spoon out, dumbass. This is the total delusion of these people. They're just holding on, folks, by their toenails. Chris Como, we at CNN can possess WikiLeaks emails, but you can't. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> we have the video clip. Look at that little power-tripping nobody. His, what's his father say? If you don't support abortion or banning guns, get out of New York. And they said, you mean they said, I said, get out. Just total thug, just total, you know, Adolf Hitler level. Just get out of here. We rule everything. Now all full of the chutzpah, come on, everybody are just like, let's hit Russia. Give a bloody nose body bag of all these weird women in fancy $5,000 dresses on TV, Samantha Power and stuff, all, all looking power tripping. I mean, those people shouldn't be McDonald's managers on the power trips they're on. Going, we're going to hit Russia, and we spent $5 million over the Ukraine. We got their weapons, and they're all their eyes look all crazy. It's like, what the hell? The Russians look all concerned. We're moving into our bunkers. Have our missiles ready. Please, America, wake up. Well, crazy people run your country. Please stop. They're like, oh, shut up. We're going to get you. <laughs> it's the women's chance to be in charge, hopping around like witches. And it's just like, do, 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 do. Let's go to the General, General Dumford clip because I mentioned it, where if you watch the whole hour-long exchange, they're like, go ahead and hit the Russians. And they're like, well, that'll be a declaration of war. You, they're going to fight back. Here it is. For Syria. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that, that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? 
All, all the options. Uh, what they, do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. And we can keep playing the clips if you'd like. We've got a top story up on InfoWars.com. Uh, again, with the Russian government saying prepare for nuclear war. It's the greatest danger ever. Get ready. We have our special report breaking all that down on InfoWars.com right now. But instead, we've got Gloria Allred with a string of women, like she always does, running around protecting them from another rich guy. Well, don't worry. America won't be too rich much longer. We'll be just like a third world country, and you can, uh, I guess, go out and, uh, you know, beg for, beg for burgers on the street corner. Uh, because that's where this country is going. Now, when we come back, I've got to start getting to these clips. These are epic clips. Trump says corporate media, Clinton's most powerful weapon. The media then laughs and says they're not biased. It's, it's insane. Then where does Trump get his talking points from? Often the alt-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, the guy that said Hillary's server was hacked first years ago. Uh, Tim Kaine blasts Donald Trump's rigged election claim as scare tactics as they say Trump's trying to rig it. Trump, you're trying to rig the election with the Russians. Election fraud doesn't exist, though. If he says we're going to do it, he's insane. That's like saying you're an effing white male and you're a white male. I mean, we go on the street nationwide and white men come up to our reporters who are white, some of them, and scream, you have no credibility, you can't talk, you're an effing white male. And we say, but well, then how do you have credibility? You're an effing white male. And they just scream back, you're an effing white male. Uh, then Newt Gingrich, most powerful video ever from Gingrich. I mean, I got to say, I don't like Gingrich personally. I don't trust him. But what he says is total truth. That's coming up. Uh, Chuck Todd interviews uh, Mike Pence. It's all coming up. Very important. Stay with us. Coming up tomorrow and Wednesday, we're going to release uh, damning evidence of Clinton crimes in Haiti. So investigative reporters, our reporters have traveled to Haiti. I wasn't going to start releasing it today, but I really want to release it with a full push, with articles, with backup information, with the history, because it's, it's, it's so shocking, I don't even know what to say. I mean, when you see it for yourself and how much they hate them, how do I find words sensational enough to describe what it is? Breaking. Clinton crimes in Hades to be released Wednesday, or evidence of Clinton c carnage in Haiti to be released Wednesday. I mean, I don't know. Uh, special report, the Haitians absolutely hate the Clintons. The Clintons are enemy number one. I mean, there's so many stories to this. You've got the UN there refusing to give aid to the people. We have the video. You're not going to see Vice Magazine down there doing it, though. They're owned by HBO now. They're part of the team. You're not going to see anybody doing it. They're just going to sit around and say they're liberals and drive Subarus. And I'm not against the fact you drive a Subaru, but Portlandia is not a real way of life. It's a delusion. And we've got a bunch of Portlandians, like out of the movie, out of the TV show, starting World War III. You people are crazy. And now you want to shut down the free press. You want to play stormtrooper, all because you've weakened the country and created such a mass of domesticated people. I don't want to call men feminized. Women aren't inherently weak or stupid. It's, 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 it's spoiled, rotten cults disconnected from reality. Is what we're dealing with. 41% of voters nationwide say election could be stolen from Trump. It's almost 80% when they only ask Republicans. Well, of course it could be stolen. Everybody knows about election fraud and all the battles and all the rigging. I mean, who, 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 who doubts? We have all the WikiLeaks. The rigging of the election against Bernie Sanders. It's all confirmed. But they sit there laughing on CNN and NPR to make you feel alone. You're not alone. And they're talking about the danger. Hillary Clinton has put out new videos and is going to spend $20 million attacking Alex Jones uh, and the fact that Trump likes him. Like, let's go to that clip first as we go out to break because they want Trump to run from what's made him so successful. He's not doing that again. He saw how he was nice to her and got destroyed in the first debate. He went after her and was it was like 
Valhalla. So let's go out to break with, where does Trump get his talking points from? This is the new official Hillary Clinton ad. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. I will not let you down. The official story is a fable and that inside job is the only explanation. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. They're the ones running ISIS. I mean, I've interviewed the cops and the, and, and the people that saw the feds plant the bombs in Oklahoma City. I think we'll be speaking a lot. I think she's going to show up. And uh, all right, and pause right there. We're going to come back because I went to this late. We're going to play the whole thing when we come back. But again, all of it out of context, all of it misrepresented, and all of it to, to project it onto him. We don't need the outro. It's fine. I mean, this is the reality of what we're dealing with. This is what we're facing in this culture. This is all they've got. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So, Desperate Hillary has already tried for a year to make a big deal out of the fact that Donald Trump talks about global government. That Donald Trump talks about the fact that there's a new world order. But Donald Trump talks about the fact that in her email, she's working for foreign mega banks to sign over our sovereignty to all these different multinational corporate institutions like TPP, the IMF, the World Bank, the XM Bank, the World Trade Organization, on and on and on. I mean, they can't have their cake and eat it, too, and have thousands of news articles calling for world government and pushing it and saying, don't we all just work for central banks on CNBC? And, and five guests say, yes, we work for central banks. They control the world now. We're not in a democracy or a republic. We're run by multinational banks, CNBC. The host and five guests all agree on show after show. Trump comes out, points out we're giving up our sovereignty. Our borders have been dissolved outside of law. Of course, I'm saying the same thing. Of course, Nigel Farage is saying the same thing. And yes, Trump is awake to this and has learned a lot the last 10 years. He was always against NAFTA and GATT 25 years ago before I was on the air. But I'm not saying that so, oh, I'll defend Trump because, oh, God, they're connecting me to him. They create much ado about nothing to create the illusion that talking about the New World Order is bad. On Friday, remember they said, it's anti-Semitic to talk about foreign cabals. They inject the race issue to try to get us off this subject, not because it's discrediting, but if we start talking about how we're run by foreign megabanks, if we start talking about how we're run by these foreign institutions, and how we've lost sovereignty, it's game over for them. I love how they take Howard Stern interviews he's done where he gets asked racy questions and act like new Howard Stern discovered, new, where he got asked about, you know, threesomes 15 years ago. Oh my gosh, he, he, he's done for now. We just discovered new Alex Jones interviews, but why they were hidden like, oh, investigative report, all this fanfare as they ignore all the WikiLeaks, all the criminality, all the real news, all the horrible things, the fact there's new stuff about her health being bad in the WikiLeaks. Of course it is. And Podesta trying to cover it up. Of course. Let's go to the new national ad, Hillary's Hope. that She's sending out to all her constituents. It's online. It's airing on TV. Here it is. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. I will not let you down. The official story is a fable and that inside job is the only explanation. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. They're the ones running ISIS. I mean, I've interviewed the cops. And the, and, and the people that saw the feds plant the bombs in Oklahoma City. I think we'll be speaking a lot. I think she's going to show up and uh, on drugs, though. She's going to be blacked <laughs> out. I will not let you down. She's a freaking demon and she stinks. And so does Obama. I go like, what? Sulfur. And I have the government documents where they said they're going to encourage homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. And I'll tell you, it is surreal. I love it. To talk about issues here on air and then word for word hear Trump say it two days later. Oh, it is oh. amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I should be happier about that. But it is just such an amazing time to be alive. I have too much energy right now. I've been working seven days a week. I've cut back my caffeine intake like almost to nothing. And I'm bouncing off the walls because this is so epic. Let me, let me calm down a little bit and come back and give you the good news.
And I mean, let me tell you, the, it's some really good news. Uh, amazing time to be alive. But, but I got to tell you, I, I'm very frustrated right now because the Haiti stuff we got so powerful that I don't even know how to do it justice. I mean, it, this is over the top. All right, Gary Byrne, former Secret Service agent, to be our guest at the bottom of the hour. Then I'm getting into all these clips of Donald Trump coming out and basically destroying the mainstream media, calling them on what they're doing, and getting into the fact that there is a conspiracy against the American people by 20 media executives. Zuckerberg admits it. The head of Google all admits it. Bezos admits it. The Washington Post that they want to deliver this to Hillary. And there she is getting all of these endless corporate donations at levels we've never before seen, and Trump gets zero. Then Trump raises $170 million. Think about that. $170 million. And they're supposed to give him half of it for ads. Zero Republican money for him because the same establishment we all claim we're against wants to keep him out because they've got this country under their control. Hillary Clinton is out raising Trump 20 to 1 among billionaires. Oh, but she's the anti-establishment candidate who's against TPP that Trump's been against for a decade. Turns out she helped write a bunch of it in the emails and all the new WikiLeaks are coming out. So here's the good news. Even if they steal this election, and, and Trump still in a lot of battleground states is, is, uh, is ahead, but it is close. This whole corrupt system of crony capitalism is coming down. And our republic is being restored. It took them 25 years to get out of the euro in England. And that's still ongoing. We're going to get out of this whole global system a lot quicker. There it is. RNC TV ad spending for Trump, zero. And he's raised them record money. He's brought record numbers into the Republican Party. Four million more people in the Republican Party than there's ever been. But see, they're all bought and paid for by the same lobbyist. It's an amazing time. But the good news is the facade has fallen. The metrics, the online numbers show it. Even Google admits 2,500 times more interest in WikiLeaks than all of the Trump scandals. I noticed we covered that and broke that last week. And Fox and Friends on uh, Saturday morning had it up there with, with Juan Williams attacking Trump. Simply amazing. Gary Byrne, crisisofcharacterbook.com. He's a veteran Secret Service officer in the Clinton White House, served in federal law enforcement for nearly 30 years in the U.S. Air Force, Security Police, and Uniform Division of the Secret Service, and most recently as a federal air marshal. While serving as a Secret Service officer, Gary protected President Bill Clinton and First Lady and the First Family in the White House, and his book is Crisis of Character, and it ties in with other Secret Service agents that have gone public. Bongino's not gone public, uh, but they've broken his house and threatened his family and his car. And he, he calls me up and he says, listen, I know you're not saying I'm your source of this stuff, but God, can I come on and tell people I'm not just so they stop? No, we had Secret Service on the ground tell us she's fallen down. She's got a special ambulance vehicle. It's got lift gates. We're not telling anything secret. Just watch what's going on. We said, well, what does she have? We're not going to tell you. Just start watching. She's falling down all the time. That's why they, they get her on medication. She disappears for a week. She can come back out for a few hours. But they're rolling the dice having her up here Wednesday. And that's why they're saying that uh, Axelrod wants her to drop out now because he destroyed her last time. So, so much is happening. But just, Gary, we've gone over your story. People should read the book to get it. White House Secret Service officer discloses his firsthand experience with Hillary Bill and how they operate. But Bongino just said this. Of course, he was the head of their foreign detail, very senior. He said it's, quote, worse than you know. And we know they stole the plates. We know they stole George Washington's, you know, silverware. We know that they've done all these. It's, it's all in the WikiLeaks now. I mean, now that more and more of the WikiLeaks have come out, you've never really given up the secrets. You've just talked about what type of person she was. But now it's admitted, throwing fits constantly, treating people horribly, uh, being very unstable. Like General Flynn has said, that she's known to be very unstable. For you as an insider, and by insider, somebody that's you know, been a fly on the wall, uh, we know that <laughs> I'm about to make a joke, but a fly on the wall. Just what is it like as a citizen to be watching all this? First of all, thank you, Alex. It's great to be with you again. Thank you, sir. And uh, from my perspective, it was almost comical. And, and what I mean by that is, I mean, it, it was demoralizing to the people that she would berate. And but it, like, for instance, we talked about before when she berated me. It didn't really bother me because, you know, consider the source, Alex. I didn't take her seriously. She, watching her 
in it with her dictator type attitude and walking around the West Wing and the White House berating people, who could take her seriously? It was a joke. And the ideal that she has the gravitas to be president of the United States, she's clearly, in my opinion, what I witnessed in those eight years that I protected her, she wasn't a very good first lady. She was a complete failure as secretary of state. And as far as her eight years in the Senate, what did she do there? Um, so the Hillary Clinton that I know that I wrote about in my book, Crisis of Character, is, is completely incompetent. And, you know, the truth is, if people pay attention, they've also heard that from the, the director of the FBI. He either told us she was completely incompetent or she was just too stupid to understand the security measures that were supposed to be. Well, in it place. looks like extreme <laughs> recklessness because to lie to yeah. Congress after she knew it had been hacked, if she, she knew she deleted the emails, she's all been caught in lies now. Yeah. That's what WikiLeaks said she should be indicted. The problem is, I guess, Loretta Lynch won't let that happen. Right. I see the same thing you do. And the other thing, too, is, and I know your listeners are smart, and, and I know you are, too, but I just want to repeat again. Everything that you hear come out of their mouth, especially her mouth, is if it's not a lie, well, it's a lie, first of all. And, two, it's something that has to do with polling. Nobody knows how this woman really feels about anything because everything is poll-driven. I mean, we see that with this negative attitude towards law enforcement because polls show them in certain demographics in certain cities that plays well. That's all it is. I mean, so you're saying from your criminology background, uh, Gary, correct if I'm wrong, profiling her, Trump operates clearly off what he thinks is right and ignores the polls. That way you yeah. actually change society. You lead and get folks that are dumbed down and want to shoot cops in the back of the head to actually wake right. up and realize that's wrong. That's not how you reform things. But with her, if the polls show with her demographic, Saying cops are the devil is a great thing. She's going to go with it because is she a sociopath? Is she a psychopath? I mean, that sounds like the M.O. of somebody that doesn't have a personality. Yeah, she definitely, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, as you know, or doctor. Yeah, but, but cops are smart. You were a cop before right. you were Secret Service. I mean, right. Secret Service is all about psychology. If you were profiling right. Hillary, give us a yeah. Secret Service profile. Yeah, my, my expertise uh, of a, is an observation, and my exer observing her there's clearly something wrong with it. You just do not act like she does towards people. I mean, I've told you the stories about her telling a uniform division officer after he said good morning to her to go left himself. And I've also told you the story about, it, which is in my book, Crisis of Character, where she gets so angry, she hits a Secret Service agent in the back of the head of the Bible. Alex, you can't explain that away other than just bone crazy. I mean... And she thought she could get away with it because, Alex, she's gotten away with it her whole life. Well, I had I had Bill Clinton's long-term girlfriend on record, uh, Dolly Kyle, in here. They were on record going to school together, on record dating. I mean, it's it's on. They've been on TV together yeah. you know, back when he was running for office, uh, but uh, even before Hillary was around. And she said that Hillary flips out around cops and authority, and literally sees the military as the enemy. Uh, uh, and that's what she saw back when Hillary was young. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what I saw, and and it, and it goes, and that goes exactly to what one of the reasons I wrote my book, and and the message I'm trying to get out, Alex, is is that the Hillary Clinton and the Bill Clinton that we heard about in the early '90s, of all the crazy stuff in Arkansas, and you know it as well as I do, and in some cases even better, all the stories about the women and their relationship with each other, and the state police's statements of how they fought so badly and how crazy it was. And the Clinton machine tried to pass it off as, oh, that's just Arkansas Republican politics. They, came, they brought that same show to Washington, D.C., and I stood there with many other people and watched it firsthand. That is the real Clintons. That's the real Hillary Clinton. Now, I know you've got to be careful because you swear an oath, but you also to the your country and constitution, but the Secret Service is not supposed to talk about inside baseball. You've told as much as you can in the book. It's a page turner. It's important for every Democrat to read and really think about what they're doing. But other tidbits you've never revealed. I know it's all been vetted, so you can legally and lawfully do this. But, sure. I mean, to have somebody like Mongino, who's a tough guy, former New York cop, head of the detail, right. house getting broken into, cars, threats, you name it. You know, getting to him for even speaking out against him, not telling any secrets. You've told a lot more secrets than that. I mean, what is it about her that makes people be so concerned? Well, it's the fact that anybody that's been around her, like myself, like Dan, anybody in the Secret Service, her staff, the people that are really terrified of her are, are people that work for her um, because they know the real Hillary Clinton, the one that I described to you, not this fictitious thing you see from the mainstream media. The real Hillary Clinton is cold, distant. She She's a dictator. She literally wants to follow no rules, but she wants to invoke all these large government policies that have nothing but pages and pages of rules and regulations for the rest of us. So 
the reason I, I think people that, I mean, basically I kind of get the impression you're trying to ask me if I'm afraid of her. No, I'm not. And, and I know, I know, uh, I mean, I can't speak for Dan, but. No, I don't know. think you're afraid of her. And I mean, neither is he. It's just that no. it, 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 what I'm saying is you've gone further than, than anybody else is what sure. I'm getting at. Why are other people afraid of her? So they're afraid of her because they've seen firsthand, either they've seen it or the rumors convince them that if they do something wrong, if they step out, um, something will happen to them. Now, you know, there was this young man that supposedly set up one of her servers and had something to do with the State Department servers. And then supposedly he's been murdered in a um, in a supposed robbery in Washington, D.C. Yeah, like shot four times in the back. Right. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but I will tell you this. That's what scares people. Now, if that's just coincidental, that certainly helps them. And if it's not, again, I hope it's being investigated. But those are the kind of things, the stories out that have been around forever about them. And it's not that I ignore them, but, you know, I've been protecting people for a long time. I'm protecting myself and my family as I see fit. And uh, as you well know, we've talked about before, I'm a big fan of the Second Amendment. So um, Absolutely. Well, look, what is it like then for you to see every day thousands of new emails coming out confirming everything we knew, everything we've talked about? But yeah. it's even worse than I thought where they go, we got to keep them dumb. We got to keep them in the dark. We got to keep yeah. them complacent. Hey, this right. is illegal. I mean, just yesterday, this is illegal to take this money from a foreign government. Doesn't matter. Take the money. And then ha, right. ha, ha. I mean, right. it's like the classic... Like she's the Joker or something, yeah. where it's the classic, like they know they're criminals. Yeah, that's the Hillary Clinton that I describe in my book, as you know. And here's another thing, too, that I wanted to mention to you. You're talking about the, the emails that were leaked out by WikiLeaks. In the emails where her staff is, is talking back and forth, and they're saying disparaging things about certain groups of Americans. They're, you know, they're slamming Catholics, which I'm a very proud Catholic. Uh, they're slamming uh, Latinos. They're, they're, they're talking about African-American groups. And, and, and they're talking about them in a disparaging way. That's the real Clintons. The only reason they tried to, they pander to those people just for votes. They can't, she especially, Mrs. Clinton, I've seen it firsthand. And as you know, I talk about it in the book. She really seems to despise everybody. You talked about her despising the military. It's unbelievable the way she's treated the military and law enforcement um, that I just describe in my book. I mean, Alex, you wouldn't treat anybody that you you didn't like. It. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. She I goes out of her way to be mean. I've talked to two different groups of protective details whenever she was secretary of state uh, and when she would visit Iraq and places. And they told similar stories about her and just that it was like she would go out of her way to just have huge tirades and scream and yell and call everyone dumbasses and cuss, and they'd bring a German shepherd into the green zone area to check her quarters, and she'd go, get that effing dog out of here, just bleh, get me your commander, and just flip out. And they were just yeah. like, what the hell? Yes. Yes. Now, you know, I can tell you that I wasn't there for those instances, but those are the same things that I witnessed at the White House. This is this is the real Hillary Clinton. And the, the only reason that she's even... As, I mean, she. Let's face it. She's close, pretty close to becoming president. I mean, I do think Mr. Trump will win, and, and God knows I'm doing everything I can to make sure he wins um, with getting my message out. But the real Hillary Clinton, they can't run it on her own record because she, her record is horrendous, and they can't run on anything she's done because most of what she's done is a disaster. I mean, how the hell do? Do eight do a handful of men and women end up defending themselves in, in Benghazi, Libya? Gary J. Byrne, former Gary Gary, in Gary. small arms. When Alex, we have hundreds of millions of dollars of men and women, women and equipment standing around this country. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Your Skype really degraded. Let's just wait a moment. I, I think it's going to reconnect. Repeat what you just said. You got cut off. When you got to, we got a handful of men defending themselves at Benghazi. And then I want to go back to what you said, because one of their chefs came out and said that, that, that they were racist. He's found dead on a hike. Um, the, the other chef has now gone on record. We should play that clip, uh, you know, saying they, the, the N-word constantly. I know people that work for the Clintons. They said, look, we thought they were probably in the KKK or something, especially Hillary, as much as she, you know, just N-word this, N-word that, stuff I've never even heard you know, uh, uh, being around other white people, literally, uh, and all this craziness, loving Robert Byrd, the, you know, the Grand Dragon, uh, and all this other garbage. But then you were getting to the fact of just disparaging Latinos, you name it. It's just an incredible, they're very elitist is what I'm 
what I'm getting at here. Uh, so yeah. can you finish up with Benghazi now that your Skype's back, sir? Again, former yeah. Secret Service agent in the White House joining us, the new book, Crisis of Character, and, and then get into uh, more of an elaboration on that. Sure. So what I was stating in Benghazi was, you know, how is it possible that those men and women fought for 13 hours with, with $200,000 $200, with small arms when we had hundreds of millions of dollars of men and, and, and women around the world with equipment ready to rescue them. That's what, what, what the military does, and nobody sent a message. Alex, you can't explain that away. And I don't care what anybody says. Um, it's never been a Well, they, they've gone on record. They got the stand down more than 10 times. Yeah, and, and it is horrendous. And how do you explain that? And, you know, at the time that that happened, Alex, I was still a working federal air marshal. And just like my coworkers are now, they're flying all over the world protecting uh, Americans in, in, in aviation. And, you know, we came to the conclusion, you know, when that happened, we said to ourselves, what if one of us got taken hostage somewhere in England, in, in France, and... and some more things have happened. It hasn't happened to us yet, but it is definitely possible. Would they come for us? And our conclusion was, no, they wouldn't. That's right. And then, then the billions we now learn of illegal money to Iran for kidnapping the sailors that weren't even in their waters, that totally sets the precedence to start kidnapping more Americans. Yes. Yes. And, and that worries me. It worries me about our military. And, you know, I would like to go back to the days when, you know, our, our, our Navy needs to be in those waters and because they, they're doing they're carrying out the policies of the United States. So our commander in chiefs need them to send them the message. If you come in the harm's way, if they come at you, if they're firing past you, if they're flying by you, you need to do what the right thing is. And the right thing is you defend yourself. This is ridiculous. and that's what America would always do. I mean, you little Absolutely. gunboats come up to destroyers and start opening fire. Kill them. I mean, yeah. open up those those, you know, those big mini guns immediately. Yes. Yeah, I'm not looking for anybody to start an unnecessary war, but you have to allow us. Sure, to not standing up for yourself is as bad as right. being a peacenik. If you if you roll over, it starts a war. If you're too violent, it stops a war. But just letting Iran piss on our sailors for no reason when we've been bending over backwards right. for Iran. You have to allow us to defend ourselves. That's exactly right. Now, let's get back to the race issue because you get into it in the sure. book. And, and people I know that know the Clintons, uh, I mean, look at all the things they've done to the black community, calling black super predators, they've got to be brought to heel on video, passing minimum sentence laws that you can say are truly racist. Uh, how do they get away with it? And, and, and tell us, for folks that can't afford the book or won't read it, with 21 sure. Days Out, the type of racial stuff you saw or witnessed, sir. Yeah, the, the stuff that I saw, the stuff that I saw, Alex, was, you know, the way she berated individual officers regardless of, of their race, um, as far as this is so frustrating with the Skype. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, you were talking. Yeah, yeah start over. I almost want to get you back on phone so this is clear. Uh, but, 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 but we'll edit this so it's clear tonight, put it on the news. Start back over with what you saw that was race-based. Um, what was in, in the paper. Sure. Yeah, start over, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, so... Basically, what I saw was she berated everybody, regardless of race, especially if they were they were in uniform. Um, but when you go back to the to the emails that were leaked out and what they're discussing, that is the real Clinton machine, the real Hillary Clinton. They are clearly manipulating everybody for votes. And the one thing your your viewers and listeners need to understand, you know, the best indictment of Hillary Clinton was actually stated by Barack Obama. I remember when Obama talked about what a horrible person she was. We should get those clips. Barack Start over. Obama Go ahead. Said Hillary Clinton will say anything and do nothing. So, so basically, he, you know, he said that she would she would uh, say anything and do nothing, and he's exactly right. That is the real Clinton. That is the real Hillary Clinton. So, from your research, you obviously weren't in the Obama White House, but I've talked to Secret Service that have been in both. They say clearly Obama does treat people a lot better than Hillary. Yes. Yeah. They, 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 even the, both uh, President Obama and, and Mrs. Obama, and as far as I know, their, their children, um, from the people that I've talked to, you know, when they first got in and probably about four years ago, yeah, they're fine. They're not, they're not a, a, abusive. Um, I'm sure there may be some issues here and there, but they're nothing like the Clintons were. 
How about Bill? I mean, on a, if, if, if Hillary's at nine of uh, being rude and mean and crazy and, and, and aggressive, how was Bill? He's actually the exact opposite. He's nice. He's kind. He's jovial. He was friendly to work around. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I mean, I, I wouldn't trust him to drive my 27-year-old niece home. But, I mean, he was pleasant to be around. Sure. And that's what I get from everybody. It's that Hillary, the psychological experts and others say to me, is obviously unstable. And she's getting worse. As she yeah. gets older, she's, she's degenerating. And people are actually, the Russians have said openly, they've analyzed her personality and they're really scared of her. What people say, good, you want, no, no, not not scared like right. pissing in the corner, like scared like they're mobilizing for war. Yeah. The, the, the Hillary Clinton I observed even eight, uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago when I protected them, um, to me seemed unstable. I mean, what is it that could make you so mad, Alex, that you strike a Secret Service agent in the back of the head with a Bible? You know what I mean? Like, that's the first sign right there. And as far as Bill Clinton's personality compared to Hillary Clinton's personality, that's why they're together. Because she's nothing but a power-hungry, dysfunctional human being. And he's this very charming, very friendly, you know, I hate to say it, but he's a good politician. I mean, he can spin manure in the gold right in front of you. Where she is not. She needed him. That's absolutely obvious. Exactly. Um, exactly. Gary Byrne, uh, crisisofcharacterbook.com, the new book, Crisis of Character. Everybody should get it. Thank you for the time. Look forward to speaking to you again, hopefully, uh, when we've uh, defeated Hillary Clinton. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Knowing what you know about Hillary, you think she might try to steal the election? I think she's already tried. That's right. Thank you, sir. Well, we just heard a former senior Secret Service agent, the guy that's had the most courage yet to put a book out exposing her bizarre, vicious behavior, saying that she disparaged Hispanics. But to be fair, he said she disparaged everyone by name. White trash, filth, black filth, Mexican filth, just filth. Everybody's filth, except her, of course. And what I've been told by the military about her from multiple sources all over the world is that she's crazy and that she would blow up and freak out, but also like a robot would just say, now, everyone, be quiet. And then she would just go and, like, turn off like a robot for an hour and then go, back to work, everyone. It's like she's a Manchurian candidate or something. And, and I'm not saying that literally, but when you have multiple people saying she doesn't act like a normal human and she smells like hell, I had um, Dolly Kyle in here, Bill Clinton's admitted girlfriend and, and mistress when she was married to Hillary, saying the thing about Hillary was she stunk the worst you've ever smelled. I mean, I don't just say that so they can then have a national campaign. Hillary runs TV ads now saying, I say she smells horrible. Well, that's what I was told. I just added the fact, like in criminology, she doesn't bathe. Uh, she throws fits. She. This is the stuff you see with really screwed up people. That's why you'll see her sometimes all dolled up with her hair done, but a lot of times, most of the time, she looks like really disheveled and weird and dirty because she's a psychopath. And I was just talking to the Secret Service agent earlier about criminology. And he was concurring that this is a very dangerous woman. What would I call that last segment we posted to YouTube? Secret Service agent. Hillary has no soul. Secret Service agent. Hillary stands for nothing but herself. Secret Service agent, Hillary Clinton disparaged uh, Latinos, but in fairness, hates everyone else, but identifies you by your group. Bitter clingers, all oh, the Bernie people in their mother's basements, baristas, pieces of trash. They've been disenfranchised by this economy, and now they hate me. And that encourage her to like the common people, please. Like them. Oh, gosh, everyone knows Hillary hates everyone. What do we do? Joe Biden, I know a lot of you don't like Hillary here because she's a monster. She stole the nomination. Of course. I mean, I asked the Secret Service agent at the end, will she try to steal the election? And what did he say? Smart guy goes, well, she already has. She stole the nomination. Hillary has already stolen the election. That's a video I ought to put out. Stanford Research, Stanford University, certify what we told you. 11 states that Sanders won.
they have the exit polls where he's winning by 20, 30 percent. He loses by 5 percent, 10 percent. Then they have the states where he wins. Of those 11, what was it, seven of them, he won. And then they go, oh, the superdelegates from New Hampshire to California have decided you don't get them. And then this godsend, this, this, this kamikaze patriot, Trump comes in and he'll get up and he'll say it. Last week, we have the new WikiLeaks emails for Podesta going, oh, I wish, you know, with the head of CNN, oh, man, we really shouldn't have ever put his early speeches on. We thought it was discrediting. It gave him people that actually know what he's saying, and they, they know that we're twisting it, so we've just, we really screwed up. Yeah, you really screwed up, didn't you? You were arrogant. In the same emails, you thought that Trump would be the better candidate to run against for Hillary. Oh, like the last two Republicans were all establishment, and all had little milk toast backgrounds, and, th and were they good? Were they Democrat light? What the, what what the constituents were looking for? No, Trump's got more Republicans signed up to vote four million of them than in history. Trump's been a huge giant success, and they're trying to convince you he hasn't been taking everything he says out of context, like. What we've run into, we have to do a video on this all over the country, from Austin to California to you name it. Cities around the nation, states all over. People come over and they go, you know what Donald Trump said? All Mexicans are rapists and criminals. Really, where'd he say that? And we pulled the clip. Now he said a lot of the illegals that are here are criminals and they're raping and murdering and stuff. That's a fact. And they just go, no, he hates all Mexicans. That's all they've got. Now he's a sexual assaulter. Bill Clinton's settled sexual assault. Now they've called thousands of women that they know were connected to Trump that worked in his pageants or were on his TV shows, and they've gotten nine of them to say he kept holding my hand and asking me out on an elevator. Or he put his hand on my leg on an airplane, and then we've got him two months ago, six months ago, a year ago. We've got six of them sending him emails, and now they're getting phone records with them calling, and their families are going, I don't know about my sister, I don't know about my niece, or I don't know about my cousin, I don't know about my daughter. All she talked about was how she had the hots for Trump. <laughs> oh, yeah. See? Your own families are exposing you. And a lot of them are admitting, I'm a Democrat, I'm not even for Trump. But my daughter was in love with him. My cousin loved him. You go check the records, she's asking him to come a few months ago to a restaurant on his campaign. And he didn't come, did he? So now she's gonna get her attention one way or another, and she's got Gloria Allred running around behind her. And, and, and again, even if Trump had done some of this, then I'd be concerned. But here's the thing, Hillary is 20 magnitudes worse. I mean, Hillary is the one of the biggest criminals in history. She's involved in every form of crime you can imagine. She's totally re reckless, psychotic, turning jihadis loose that have killed 200,000 Christians and are cutting women's genitals off by the hundreds of thousands and putting five-year-old and six-year-old girls in sex slavery and training little boys as young as six years old how to saw people's heads off. We've got the ISIS training videos in HD of them shooting people in the head and slitting people's throats, six, seven-year-old kids. I mean... I'm not going to show it to you. You can go find it if you want to. And it's in the new emails from last week and Saturday. Two data dumps. Her talking about Saudi Arabia and their operation bringing in Al-Qaeda and ISIS. I've got a bunch of clips I've got to get to. This is the most important part of the broadcast right now we're about to get to. Uh, I just want to let you know that this week we have the debate special. We're going to be covering the final debate, the final showdown before... The election by then will be 19 days in. We're 21 days now. It'll be 20 tomorrow. 19 on Wednesday. To honor the original 13 colonies, that's lucky for patriots, unlucky for tyrants. That's a little secret of the 13. Got a number 13 tattooed on my back. Things get uh, going a little bit rough. Black going to turn to red. The final showdown, freedom versus tyranny. Live feed analysis, 13 hours of coverage. Starts 11 a.m. Central right through, got a helicopter over the building, right through until the middle of the night with our great crew. Start sending the link out now, infowars.com forward slash show for Patriot True Coverage. And to mark that, we got 25% off Brain Force, our amazing nootropic. 
uh, leading competitors are 50 60 70 dollars for things that are similar this has got stuff that's even prescription in europe it's it's, it's all seen as safe and healthy but consult your doctor before you use it secure your brain for 25 percent off that's going we're going to end the knockout special today uh, this one is extended for a week. Uh, the uh, special we just launched on the Brain Force, but the, the the knockout where you get nine different healthy earth created uh, Mother Nature created compounds from L tryptophan to melatonin to valerian root to lemon balm to chamomile and more. True restful sleep, fourteen ninety five, folks. At nineteen ninety five, it's a steal. A normal bottle of just melatonin, the same dose is nineteen bucks. This is I mean, that's what we have as game changers. Total fusion, amazing sleep. I love it. I don't need it all the time, but I do take it uh, more these days because there's so much happening and going on. It's hard to sleep when you're so excited. Last run ever for the Hillary for Prison shirts. The final run, the final countdown right now. And, of course, your purchase supports what we're doing here. And I'm in the film. Charlie Daniels is in it. Uh, it is an expanded uh, version, the second film that Chuck Undersea has put out. It's so important to go to their website and find out where it's showing or through the computer programs that these sites have. You can just say where you'd like to see it. and Enough people click it, then they'll have a showing there. I think like 20 people in a theater of 200 click it, it then it'll make it show in that town. So that's a way to wake people up. Uh, it's a great new film. Chuck Undersea, General uh, Boykin, the founder of Delta Force, Charlie Daniels. G. Edward Griffin, Joel Skousen, myself, Alex Jones. It covers a range of topics, such as privacy, Agenda 21, the Federal Reserve, and much more. And it'll really wake people up. Visit revelationthemovie.info to purchase the DVD or check into hosting it at a theater near you. And if you want to just rent out a theater and show it, that's what this is all about, folks. Expend your capital now. That's your real voting power or lose everything. Chuck is a retired Army colonel in his own right, a great patriot, and he just has been working on this five years to try to battle the New World Order. So this is a key part of the fight. want everybody to get involved in it. At least get the DVD and buy one for friends and family. It's available at revelationthemovie.info, revelationthemovie.info, or check out theaters in your area. And then finally, I'm getting all these clips. Solutions from Science is one of our oldest sponsors. They're always upgrading the latest solar panel and control unit technology. They have a wide spectrum uh, of units and other survival products. Solutions from Science is, again, one of my oldest sponsors. You should check it out. This is uh, their top-of-the-line model, their perfect power solar generator, uh, the one I use at my home. I've actually got several of these. Uh, it's, it, I've got one that's 10 years old still working. Uh, it's expandable. Of course, they've been updated. So you can make it as powerful as you want. Normally, around $6,000, they're letting them go for 1,500 as a lost leader. This is unprecedented. Visit PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com and get yours before they're gone. PowerGridChaos.com. Okay. You can watch the informational videos there on the site. Let me go through these clips, and then I'll give a little bit of commentary as we go. Again, they tell Trump, don't do this. Don't talk about rigging. It doesn't exist, but we got to federalize things to stop the rigging. Don't talk about the Federal Reserve being private or you're anti-Semitic. They're the ones injecting all this race stuff and religion stuff because they're desperate, because they know Trump isn't just trying to get elected as an establishment person. He's trying to use this to change the whole paradigm, to be a revolutionary, to be a leader, not to do what the little political pundits like Karl Rove and you know Axelrod tell you how to do. Their internal memos admit they're in total panic. They're in total crisis, even if they steal it from Trump. It's a devastating exposure of the New World Order. WikiLeaks, look at all of it. We've only begun to fight. Everyone around the world understands the great evil. That's the Democratic Party and Republican establishment, and humanity is on the march. The empire is on the run. So here's Trump in a latest statement, corporate media, Clinton's most powerful weapon. Powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda, and the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. Now, how'd the media spend this? They said Trump says there's a conspiracy against him. No, he didn't. He said against and us. Their agenda, 
is to elect crooked Hillary Clinton at any cost, at any price, no matter how many lives they destroy. For them, it's a war. And for them, nothing at all is out of bounds. That's right. And now six of the this nine is women. A struggle for the survival of our nation. It, it is, folks. Me. And this will be our last chance to save it on November 8th. Remember that. Uh, Nonviolently. He's absolutely right. I mean, they're going to put five Supreme Court justices in. They're going to shut down the free press. It's all in, folks. And I've never said cheat because I, I always want to have the moral high ground, but I've been controlling myself lately. Because we know the Democrats are triple, quadruple voting all over the country. God, they're scum. They drive 55 and 70s. They park and take up all the room at a gas station. They piss on everyone. They are demons. They are demons. I've been doing a study. I talked about today. They are just, well, they have studies out that Democrats and liberals are six times more likely to rob and six times more likely to not give to charity, but they'll, they'll moral signal virtue signal and tell you there's something like 11 times more active telling you to give i mean look at hillary she got two billion dollars of stolen haiti money that good people gave but ran through that w evil woman and then she sits around and shakes her finger and says we're all not paying enough and gary haven who i know is worth over a billion and a half dollars I looked it up. He's given something like $80 million to Haiti. Built whole deals, put in water systems, flights every week. Now it's almost every day because he knows these people. They're dying in front of him, and, and, they, and, they, and, and the government's completely corrupt. And then he tries to fly them in to the main city to get medical care, and the UN's there even trying to stop them. The footage we've got is, 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 I'm in there watching it this morning, and I'm like, I can't believe we even have this. This is like, un it won't matter to the media. They're not going to cover it, but you'll see it. And see, that's the problem. They know now that we're as big as they are, bigger. And collectively, the, the independent media is much bigger. And so that's why they're so scared. That's why they want to shut down drugs. They now admit it. They say, Federal Elections Commission and others, they say, we're going to shut it down. Just like the Supreme Court justice told them a year ago. And they're coming after us. I mean, hell, Hillary names me by name. And then I sit there and do joke videos where I talk about the estrogen mimickers in the water and how it is causing frogs to be bisexual and not reproduce and fish as well. And then I make a joke. I talk about how the media takes it out of context and always takes me saying the comment six years ago about gay frogs instead of looking at the real science. And then they take the new clip out of context and put it in national campaign and I was reading this new ad package by, they're talking about it being up to $20 million of them having me scream about gay frogs. And people say, well, then don't do anything they can't take out of context. Ladies and gentlemen, they're the ones deceiving. I can't control that. They take little clips of Trump acting goofy and take out of context. We're real. That's what real people that don't read off teleprompters and don't follow polls. You want it real? This is what it looks like, okay? And Hillary has put out her official email to tens of millions of her minions about Alex Jones and how bad he is and then how Donald Trump likes the show. Well, you know why? I mean, Donald Trump was told by generals that are advising him who are great patriots and by other people about how great I am. He already knew about some of our work, but he began to look into it and he really clicks with it because he's a patriot. And so, yes, of course, I have an amazing reputation with people that aren't traitors. I mean, all I want to do is have the same tariffs China has on us, you know, like Donald Trump does. Fair, basic stuff. Of course we agree. It's common sense. Uh, song about Hillary. <laughs> you know, I was thinking during the break, what headline do I give this Haiti report that's coming out in the next few days? New Haiti report will destroy the Clintons? We probably had 10 headlines like that last year. I noticed the trolls said, I've seen this headline a bunch. Oh, admitted Witty, uh, WikiLeaks, Hillary running Al-Qaeda and ISIS. This will destroy Hillary if it gets out. Doesn't get out enough, she just keeps sailing on. Am I lying? It should destroy her. The Benghazi stand down being confirmed. We said, Hillary ordering Benghazi stand down confirmed. This sh can destroy her.
But it's like, let's hypothetically say I'm shooting a bison with a 500 Smith & Wesson. I don't mean this violently towards her, it's just an analogy. It, it doesn't destroy the bison unless you actually use it. See, the difference. Weird analogy, but it's from an experience I had once. We're sitting here looking at this, and it those of us that are informed, it just gets crazier and crazier. We're not in the echo chamber. We're in the real world. All I do is read everything. All I do is study everything. And I am marveling that Hillary's gotten away with so much. It's crazy. Now, I've got this amazing Newt Gingrich clip. And listen, I don't like Newt Gingrich. He was hired by the Rockefellers as a professor and a political analyst. He has said a lot of great things in the years, but then flip-flopped on it. He's been for illegal wars. But when he talks and, and tells the truth, and it's not, that, it's not that I believe him. I know what he says is total truth. In this new CNN clip, he destroys them. That's coming up when we start the next hour. But he really does annihilate them with the truth about how there has been a coup in this country by 20 media executives to deceive the American people. And the question is, will the coup d'etat be successful? This is a death battle by multinational interests who bought off the media to see if they can really get away with selling us and going under world government, which is all being announced. I mean, you can't have a world government and announce it in the New York Times and then have the Pope announce it and everybody else announce it and then say we're anti-Semitic because we don't want to be under a world government. It's kind of like we're, we're racist because we don't want Obamacare. What the hell does that have to do with it? Oh, the president's black. I forgot. Now it'll be you don't like women because you don't want, you know, whatever new nightmare Hillary's got, like banning our guns with executive orders. But we have all the arsenal here to bring down their political system in an info war. We're locked and loaded, people. You've just got to get it out to everybody and make your so-called liberal friends. Uh, get through your comfort zone. Go up to them. Show them. Go look at this. This new Haiti report. Because a lot of liberals aren't bad people. If they're not brain bug level, you know, controller liberals. But actual well-meaning liberals say, look, this is the Haitians hate her. She stole $2 billion. Why is that okay? That's killing people. Her own daughter's emails say we're killing people. 10,000 died just because they let the U.N. do this horrible stuff. Let's go out to break with uh, the Vice President Tim Kaine, again, demonizing Trump for talking about this being rigged because it's so obvious. I mean, this is ridiculous. Here it is. You don't control reality, Kaine. Especially um, in the last couple of days, as Donald Trump has kind of started to go wilder and wilder, I think after, by all accounts, losing the first two debates, he started to make wild claims, kind of scorched earth claims about the election being rigged, etc. So we have to keep putting out a message and we need to call on everybody to speak out about the, uh, the fact that, that we run elections. All right, I am certainly um, overwhelmed today. I have not gotten to the WikiLeaks info yet. I have not gotten to a bunch of the clips yet. We have Roger Stone popping in. We're going to have the big Haiti news tomorrow and Wednesday. I was going to do it today, um, but Haven was in the air delivering food. I don't want to get in the middle of that. So we're going to cover it tomorrow and the next day. Incredibly damning to the Clintons. Just Haiti is on fire with anger against them. People are dying. The U.N. is refusing to render aid. They've seen no Clinton Foundation support, and that dirty foundation is still collecting money for Haiti right now. I mean, I have entered the twilight zone. This is so bold, but not just by them, by their constituents. Let's back up to Kane and play the full clip, and then I'll get to the amazing Newt Gingrich clip, which, if it is amazing, I have to say it. I mean, it's what's so frustrating. Gingrich knows exactly what's going on. He's why he's a top operative. For whatever reason, he's chosen to go with Trump because he's smart, thinks Trump's going to win. Or maybe he was like, he's like Darth Vader and going to get good at the end. I don't know. But it's very truthful, very astute, very piercing, very on target. And it's just, it makes it worse because I don't trust him. But it doesn't matter. It's coming up. See, it makes me like him, and I don't like that. You know how that feeling? Love, hate. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Tim Kaine clip. And this is all lies. She cheated in the first debate. It was two against one. He barely won because of the cheating. I think that's an accurate statement. But because he didn't attack, he lost with constituents. But overall, barely won. He annihilated her. Even most Democrats admit that. But Tim Kaine, the little bug-eyed bastard, it's not fair to bastards to call him that, I apologize. The little bug-eyed weasel. The man who I would cast to play child molesters in movies. I mean, I'm not saying he's a child molester, but, you know, 
All these fake allegations against Trump on sex stuff. All I'm going to say is like a pervert. Well, he should drive a, you know, ice cream truck or something. But let's go ahead and, and go to Mr. Ice Cream Truck Driver. Especially um, in the last couple of days, as Donald Trump has kind of started to go wilder and wilder, I think after, by all accounts, losing the first two debates, he started to make wild claims, kind of scorched earth claims him. about the election. No, he knows he's winning an internal polling, and he knows you people are lying over and over and over and over again. And you want to play the part of the daddy, the authority who decides what the rules are and doesn't make wild statements while your surrogates say we're all racist and evil and, and, and Republicans get firebombed. And you pull out all the stops and say he hates all Mexicans and do all this other stuff. And then we up our rhetoric and actually cover what you stand for. And you're crapping your pants, begging us to stop. Because the latest internal emails show you guys are panicking that we're overturning your entire paradigm. So that's what's really happening is Trump is dealing you political death blows. You might try to steal the election. You might coast over the line here, buddy. But nationalism is rising and you know it, turd basket. Let's go back to him. Claims about the election being rigged, etc. So we have to keep putting out a message, and we need to call on everybody to speak out about the uh, the fact that that we run elections and we run them well here. He shouldn't be engaging in those scare tactics, and so we're needing to push that message. And we ask GOP leaders also to stand up for the integrity of the American electoral process. Okay, so let's be clear. They mean the GOP whores, the establishment globalist that have always been trying to sabotage Trump, that have been voting with the Democrats and the multinationals to solve the country's out. I want to take this cane clip, though, and I want to show my original warning on the election, how they stole it from Sanders, Trump responding, saying they're going to try to steal it, then the election officials coming out admitting it's already being stolen, Democrats, then the Fed saying they're going to federalize it to keep it safe from Trump and the Ruskies, but there's total integrity, and so Trump shouldn't say there's a problem. See, they know their constituents are so stupid they think socialism delivers when it delivers nightmares, North Korea. That they think he can sit there and say, there is no election fraud, it doesn't exist, but there's a total emergency and our election's in total peril, so the UN, the EU, and everybody else is coming in to control our elections. <laughs> and they just keep doing this, and they keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It's like I do a whole rant and show 20 mainstream news articles where they admit that chemicals in the water are destroying fertility and creating asexual and bisexual traits in animals that are causing mutations. And I go, and then, and then they claim I'm talking about gay frogs. They cut it out again and say it's about gay frogs. Roger Stone's got big breaking news joining us at the bottom of this hour, former head of the Trump campaign. And the media has figured out one of his uh, top advisors <laughs> figured out a few other things, too, and they're not too happy, to say the least. I mean, we've got foreign occupiers in this country. We've got globalists that have conquered it via fraud. They think that they control the entire narrative and the entire paradigm, and they've totally discredited themselves in the attempt at using whatever influence they have left on weak-minded people, on childlike people. They have totally shot their wad. And I predict, no matter how this election goes, you're going to see a huge shakeup and a lot of the pundits you see on TV will not be there after this election on CNN, MSNBC, you name it. Because one way of trying to get credibility back is to bring in fresh faces. But this really is an incredible time to be alive. And they're throwing everything they've got at Trump with the mountains of confirmed lying and selling secrets and selling access to foreign governments. And Hillary even representing other foreign governments for money. I never thought of that. She didn't just take money to sell out the U.S. She took money for access to get to the Chinese president and others. It's like, whoa. You think you know a lot, and then you get schooled when it's worse than you thought. So we'll go through some of that when Stone joins us. Uh, but I've got a lot of economic news. Again, Deutsche Bank is rolling over quick. They want to hurry up, get this election done, and then implode it, whether it's Hillary or Trump. But they know Trump's not going to go along with new banker bailouts and selling the country further out and losing more sovereignty. And that's why he endangers their entire apple cart. Now, again, I've said this in the last hour. I want to preface this. Newt Gingrich has written a lot of books. I've read them. Newt Gingrich has prefaced a lot of books. I've read them. He's a smart guy. He signed on as a globalist with the Rockefellers in Nelson Rockefeller's campaign. 
I do not trust him any further than you can throw him. And it's a good thing that Trump didn't pick him as his VP. But I'll say this. What he says in this piece I'm about to play is dead on accurate. And again, that's why he frustrates me, because I know he knows what's going on. I've read some of his books, but then what he does politically is something entirely different. But what he says here is absolutely on target. The video is Newt Gingrich owns ABC News. Martha Raddatz, who did the whole debate last week, over anti-Trump coverage. Listen to this very carefully. You heard Tim Kaine talk about his concerns over charges of a rigged election. But Mr. Trump has been continuing to ramp up the rhetoric and tweets and speeches. Senator Jeff Sessions joined the course yesterday saying they are attempting to rig the election. So who are they and how are they doing this? Well, I think they are the news media. This is not about election officials at the precinct level. This is about last Friday when the networks spent 23 minutes on the Trump tape and less than one minute, all three networks combined, less than one minute on Hillary Clinton's secret speeches that were being revealed in WikiLeaks. And you look at that and you say, I mean, I think it's amazing that Trump is as close as he is right now, considering the one-sidedness of the news media barrage. And the best description of it is by Barry Castleman in his blog, where he said, this is a coup d'etat. He said, 14 million citizens in private ballots picked Donald Trump. 20 TV executives have decided to destroy him. But, but you say it's not at the precinct level, but Trump has also told people to monitor polling stations. They should. You look at Philadelphia, you look at St. Louis, you look at Chicago. I mean, again, I'm old enough. I, I remember when Richard Nixon had the election stolen in 1960, and no serious historian doubts that Illinois and Texas were stolen. So to suggest that we have, that you don't have theft in, in Philadelphia is to deny reality. So you really think this election could be stolen? Do you believe that if Mr. Trump loses, it will be because of a massive conspiracy or fraud, not because more Americans voted for someone else? I think that without the unending one-sided assault on the news media, Trump would be beating Hillary by 15 points. I think when you look at WikiLeaks and you look at all the things she has said, when you look at the deals in Russia that Bill Clinton made and that the Clinton Foundation made, I mean, all this nonsense by Cain about Russia, it's Clinton, Bill Clinton, who got a half million dollar speech. It is the Clintons who got money for the Clinton Foundation from Russia. It is, it is Podesta who was on a Russian company advisory board that was apparently funded by Putin. So uh, the, the, the news media's one side, and this is the worst I've seen in my lifetime, and I'm old enough, that's a fairly long statement. Bill Clinton settles rape cases. They accuse Trump of sexual assault for touching women or, or shaking their hands. And then it turns out the women are begging him for jobs or him to come visit them. Not 10 years ago when they say this to I me mean, now. Basically, stalkers is what it's starting to look like. But they're in bed with the Russians, so they accuse Trump of being in bed with the Russians. I want to go to another one of these clips here. There's a bunch of these. Well, there's a second part again, which let's play first. And then I want to get to Chuck Todd interviews uh, Mike Pence. Uh, here's the second part again, Rich. I'm just saying to you, there are clearly cases where you clearly have intimidation. There are cases where you clearly have theft. There are cases where you have people... There's a guy in California who was voting 24 years after he died. I mean, so to suggest to us that people who are concerned about honest elections are somehow nutty, I think is a mistake. Second, Trump's major complaint about the election is not polls, It's not at the poll level. It's at the news media level. This election is being rigged by the national media who are doing everything they can to suppress bad news about Hillary and everything they can to maximize bad news about Trump. You just heard me talk about WikiLeaks <clears throat> with, with Tim Kaine. Yes, you, you, you spent how long of that session on Trump and sex and then how long in that session? I'm, I'm just suggesting to you... Let, let, let's talk a little bit about his language this okay. week. And that's... And then she changes the subject. The numbers have been done. They're giving 20 to 1 coverage, depending on which story you look at. Some it's, it's worse. To WikiLeaks that they're giving to the sex stuff. And anybody can turn the news on and see that. But that's not even the issue here. They're sitting there saying, we've got to federalize the election because it's the worst ever total penetration by hackers and the Russians. But Trump is insane. I keep going back to this because he's warning of election fraud. Think about it. Then, if I was Genrich, I would have raised the point. 
wait a minute. You're saying there isn't collusion with the media and Hillary? Look at all these WikiLeaks. I'd have them printed out where she's talking to CNN. Her people are telling them what to do. The New York Times, MSNBC, you name it. You're, you're getting directives from her. You've been caught. But the woman sits there laughing again. It's like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like the Clinton News Network is connected to the Clintons. Now, going to the next clip, this is the VP candidate on, again, with another Democratic Party operative. I love how most of these people are admitted former top operatives of the Democratic Party. Whether it's Wolf Blitzer uh, or whether it's Chuck Todd or, I mean, just all, most of them are. Stephanopoulos. Chuck Todd interviews Mike Pence. Here's a clip of that where they get into the women again and keep calling it substantiated. That's in the first part. And it's not substantiated. It's totally made up. It's past the statute of limitations on purpose. But then Pence gets into the conspiracy. Here it is. Well, as you know, Donald Trump uh, does not want to move off of this issue. In fact, he, he said he's been getting advice saying that, but instead he's been uh, responding to every single accusation. Here's what he has said about a couple of the, the different accusers. She's right. She's a liar. She is a liar. She's writing a story. Check out her Facebook page. You'll understand. I was sitting with him on an airplane. And he went after me on the plane. Yeah, I'm going to go after. <laughs> Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. That was Friday, Governor Pence. Uh, you just dismissed it as just talk. We now have nine accusers that have come out since you have said it's just talk. Do you really believe it's just talk? I really do, Chuck. Uh, you know what? What we have this week is uh, is a series of, of unsubstantiated allegations, and Donald Trump. Let me stop you there. They're, they're not he's, unsubstantiated. He's categorically well, denied. On. They're not unsubstantiated. He's categorically denied those allegations, Chuck. You have firsthand accounts. They're unproven, but they are not unsubstantiated. You have an you have a firsthand account. Hit pause. We have somebody right. that disagrees. Something isn't substantiated till you have evidence or someone concurring with it. It is unsubstantiated. And most, now in criminology, they say over half of claims of rape are unsubstantiated. Does it go on? Absolutely. Do men abuse women? Absolutely. I have daughters. I love women. I don't. The point is, it's a weapon everybody knows that is used politically. How many women say, you know, after a divorce case, oh, my husband forced sex on me later, say, oh, that wasn't true. It was just political. Because that's what the lawyers tell women to do. This is what lawyers are clearly spinning. But watching Todd do this is so nauseating continue agrees with that first hand account but they are substantiated no well I, I no these are not substantiated accounts these are these are people who have brought forward allegations going back in some cases decades and donald trump has made it clear that that he categorically denies that these things ever took place but i have to tell you it really is astonishing to most americans that as these unsubstantiated allegations are, are treated with an enormous amount of coverage on this network and other networks, that revelations coming out of Secretary of State Clinton's years in the State Department and the Clinton Foundation are virtually ignored by the national media. I mean, we, we discovered this week that uh, State Department officials actually directed contracts yeah. for the Haitian recovery after after the earthquake to friends of the Clintons. And literally, that got that got almost no media attention. And while, while those that step forward with these uh, unsubstantiated claims that, that Donald Trump has denied uh, were treated with headline news and continuous coverage. It's one of the reasons why well, so many Americans I, feel like this election is being rigged by a national media that's constantly trying to change the subject away from and practice willful so, ignorance so Governor, we should toward ignore. the corruption and misdeeds and pay-for-play politics but, uh, of let the me, Let me ask you this. I mean, I, if I was Governor Pence, I'd say, Todd, you work for the Clintons and Obama as a major political operative. Look at the media's full of you people. Then I'd go, what about Clinton settling all these sexual assault cases? You sit there shaking your head, looking all upset about Trump supposedly t touching on women. And by the way, we have these women, some of them contacting Trump in just the last year, asking for jobs or asking for him to come visit them and saying how wonderful he is. You contact Thousands of women, and you get nine of them to say stuff. You put a dragnet out, and that's why you're so discredited. But notice he hit on the key. 
and that was Haiti. The reason they want to run a national ad campaign with myself in it, trying to discredit Trump, is so Trump doesn't go with our intel. We went with the cargo planes, two aircraft. We sent crew to Haiti for five days. They just got back. I want to send them back. I mean, we, we hit a gold mine of evidence against the Clintons. And attention to this will help the Haitian people. It's a 360 win. People dying, the UN refusing to help people dying, children dying. The UN there to just make you give the aid to them and then they disappear it. It's all on video. The Haitians just all over mobs of people hating the Clintons like they're the devil because they know they stole basically all the money. No aid from the Clintons. Government officials saying how horrible the Clintons are. Haitians protesting them here in the United States. So Pence understands this. You know, Trump tweeted out one of our tweets today, or, or, or a couple of them, and they make a big national deal. Look, Trump did this, and Trump tweeted InfoWars, and Trump tweeted Paul Watson and Prison Planet, and look, his son keeps tweeting, you know, Donald Jr. is the worst asset Trump's got. That's them trying to control the narrative, telling you what not to go with. Don't go with Haiti. Don't go with InfoWars. They only send crews into the war zones and have the proof. Watch. There'll be a debate within the Trump camp. We put this video out in the next few days. Trying to keep it from Trump and trying to, oh, don't, don't send out an InfoWars report. Uh, I mean, they'll say that's discredited because stop letting Hillary control the narrative. It comes out of these internal conference calls and stuff with Trump and people are like telling him, They'll, they'll say you're racist if, if you keep saying we have to have a defense. He goes, it isn't true. I don't care. Forward. Ignore them. We're here to change things. We're not here to just go along with the establishment. We're revolutionaries. We want to overturn the globalist operation. That's why they're so scared. We're not trying to look at Alex Jones. He didn't check the poll numbers. He didn't fit into the demographic of this or that. He didn't manipulate this group. No, because I know about history and Americana and free market and taxes and regulations and political systems. And I know how powerful our system is. And I've read the white papers that are public by Carol Quigley, by Brzezinski Brzezinski, by Rothkop, by Kissinger, by all of them. About the American system is too powerful. It will outproduce everyone. This is in the 70s. We must turn off the major systems of control with price fixing. And then we must transfer the offshore systems so that we can manage the different nation states between themselves. It's like in the movie Rollerball, where you've got one country can only do energy, another country can only do electronics, another country can only do transportation, and then they all break up defense because you can't have one group doing that. And that was kind of a movie about globalism and what they were actually planning. And then if you're a corporate exec in Rollerball, it doesn't matter if you're the international world champion that James Kahn plays. They wanted his wife as an act of power. One of the top global executives gets his wife. And that's why he finally stops following the orders and starts killing people out on the field to totally dominate and not give up when they want him to in a rigged game. For globalism, because you can't have one man or one team that's too strong. That has to fall. It's a metaphor for nations. The United States has to fall. James Kahn has to fall. Houston, Texas has to fall for the New World Order. Because it can't have something that's better sticking its head up. Ever thought about that? It's all just thrown in your face. We get your wife. We get your kids. We run your life. Now you're going to lose. You're going to lose against Tokyo. You're going to lose. You're going to lay down. You're going to roll over. We're going to make sure your electricity costs three times more than anybody. We're going to make sure your gas costs more. We're going to make sure your education costs more. We're going to make sure your, your health care is crap. We're going to feed your kids poison. We're going to give them garbage media. We're going to dumb them down. We're going to have a bunch of hunchback demons like Chris Todd lording over a bunch of angry little nerds who are always angry at the kids that were cooler than them and want to run everything down. Just, you know, my God damn, I'm going to screw them up. <laughs> and they all write white papers about fluoride in the water, lowering your IQ, and they sit around and talk about you and your family, and then they go on Charlie Rose, and he had a bunch of little pansies up there going, and it's, not that they're, it's not that they're gay on Charlie Rose, it's just it's something weird about effeminate guys going, he wrote the line about, about how you keep your doctor, and they go, <laughs> they're all like hopping around laughing, you turn to another channel, 
And then it's like, it, you know, another twit, Gruber going, thank God they're so dumb, we all scammed them. <laughs> and the professors are all laughing. And you tune to another guy, Gibbs, is, yeah, we, you know, we're lying about drones that don't exist when they exist. Ah, 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 ah. And clip after clip after clip after clip just celebrating overrunning everyone, celebrating screwing everyone, celebrating trashing everyone. These are our leaders because they can sit around and laugh at people because their rich parents sent them to Harvard and they're all part of the club. Oh. And it's okay when they're fascists because they're gay. And it's okay when gay people have war with Russia because <laughs> then it's liberal. And when we steal 94% of the money from the Haitians and we kill black people and the UN literally craps in their water supply, <laughs> it's okay because <laughs> we, we bit our wrist. <laughs> oh, I'm gay, so it's all right. I'm, I'm supporting evil and bankrupting small businesses. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just like, whoa, man, whoa, it, it's not okay. So we've just given the country over to a bunch of rotten, decadent intelligentsia who in their own emails go, the public's waking up, go to, go to regional and class and race warfare. I mean, it, the, the WikiLeaks say it, we're in trouble, they're waking up, they're, they still don't know what's going on, but they're not complying, we know that. I suggest we go with serious measures dealing with, what was the exact quote? Demographic, demographic control mechanisms. And that you just ship in a million Arabs from the most war-torn areas where if their mother was seen outside without a hood over her head, the son would be so upset he'd pour gasoline on mama and burn her. He'd cry though, but he had to do it for Allah. Bringing in the most whacked out loons you ever did see. And they say in the emails, this will be totally incompatible. Everything will go crazy. Then we'll come in and take everybody's free speech to not upset the Arabs. That's in all the new WikiLeaks. I already knew that a year ago, two years ago. I know their plan. I don't need another WikiLeak, another document, another thing where they admit what they're doing to us. I mean, just call these people on their bluffs, these arrogant, weird, like, just cowards celebrating how they're ripping everybody off. And again, I want to explain. I'm not bashing those guys because they act completely effeminate. It's not even effeminate, whatever that weird thing is they do. It's that they're celebrating screwing people and consolidating the economy and giggling about it and are so disconnected, they're on national TV doing it. And it's always the same. These aren't real men. Real men cannot sit there and screw over little people and get off on it. And then call themselves the altruistic loving liberals. It was demographically inspired messaging. The unawareness remains strong. Imagine, this sounds like a science fiction movie. The unawareness remains strong, but compliance is obviously fading rapidly. The problem demands some serious, serious thinking, and not just poll driven. Demographically inspired messaging. Race-based messaging. That's from a couple years ago. We're in crisis. Go directly to race war. And what's the new email? That isn't clear enough by Podesta. Sir, it's an Arab and his wife just shot everybody up. Implement immediate cover-up in the media. Damn, I wish he'd been white. That would have been useful. We told you. I don't care if it's a white guy, a black guy shooting people up. It's wrong. They just seize on it. Because remember, when it was one crazy white guy shooting the black people, everybody's like, that's terrible, that's horrible. And it's like, that's right. All whites have guilt now. Take on your guilt. La, la, la. Do Teva give us your guns? Hey, but you got bodyguards. Shut up. But it's okay if your big daddy, uh, Michael Moore, he can have bodyguards. He's special. You just don't get him. Do you understand how that works? He's an elitist. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Roger Stone just got uh, out of the airport. He's in a car being driven. I tell you, they are demonizing Roger Stone in campaign ads. They're demonizing him all over the news. Now they've doubled down. I'm told they're running something like $20 million worth of ads in this new package. I'm told they're going to have multiple ads with yours truly in it, taking things out of context, twisting it, just like they've done Trump. I, I think they're just desperate uh, to try to get Trump to moderate what he's doing because the more he gets hardcore, the more they lose, like the last debate. I think he should destroy her in 48 hours. Uh, Wednesday's debate, we're going to have 13 hours of live coverage, kicking off at 11 a.m., running past midnight. The final showdown, then we'll be 19 days out. We're 21 days out, but we have CNN host 
blaming firebombing of Republican HQ on Donald Trump. CNN says it's illegal for you to read WikiLeaks, Hillary Clinton emails, but you can go to them. I mean, the arrogance of these loons is incredible. Uh, Roger Stone, we have his uh, Bill Clinton rape shirt available that's sending shockwaves through the campaign, uh, circumventing the media blackout on that. Available at InfoWarsStore.com, as well as the limited edition Hillary for Prison shirt, now at cost nine ninety five. When they're gone, they're gone. I'm not printing anymore. So after the election, no more. All those great things come and go. Thanks for your support. We need the support. Roger Stone. Wow, I don't know where to begin. So much is happening. Uh, you were tweeting me last night and this morning saying, I guess you did predict that the, the October surprise might be war with Russia. That's what the Russians think it is. And we have declarations of war against them outside of Congress by the bureaucracy and Joe Biden. Uh, I mean, I've kind of set the table a lot of points. What do you want to tackle first? Or do you have some wild card not on my radar? Or being attacked by the president of the United States by name. Uh, he specifically attacked InfoWars. Now we learn that you are the subject of a Hillary Clinton attack ad. They just don't seem to understand that that which does not kill you makes you stronger. Uh, the, uh, the, as you know, the Clintonites have now rolled out their third day of attack on me. Their new spokesman, incredibly, former Deputy CIA Director Mike Morrell, the man responsible for the Benghazi cover-up wants me investigated for my non-existent ties to Russia. Trump and has got to take it to them having the Benghazi guy who literally ordered the stand down for Hillary holding the bag has the nerve to call us traitors. Yeah, you know, the irony of this, of course, is that um, there's a piece in Politico now which says that the Clintons... Um, revile me, uh, and they want my ties to Russia exposed. There are no ties to Russia. I've never taken a penny from the Russians. I have no Russian connections. I'm a loyal American. The problem I have with the Clintons is they're conspiracy theorists. You see, they expect us to believe that nobody died in Libya under her watch, or that um, the Whitewater billing records just popped up at the office, or that um, Chelsea Clinton is Bill's daughter, or that Danny Williams uh, is not Bill's son, I don't know how they can expect us to believe all these outrageous and crazy conspiracy theories. You know, I've noticed they attack what they know is strong. They keep telling Trump, back off election fraud, it doesn't exist, while they claim we're planning election fraud. It's it's it's, it's oxymoronic, uh, but it looks like Trump is, is, is really getting more hardcore now, like he did in the second debate. What... What is your gut or what are you hearing about what's going to happen Wednesday? Because, as you know, Axelrod is trying to get Hillary to drop out. Well, as you know, um, the uh, Donald Trump kind of got out there and said that she ought to submit to a drug test prior to the debate. Uh, she sure looked juiced up to me. I don't think that's a bad start. Uh, look, he's got to brush aside these women, these ringers who have come forward and accused him falsely uh, of uh, sexual assault. None of them have any corroboration. None of them re reported it at the time. And now, with the help of WikiLeaks, we expose the fact that this is all some David Brock-constructed fraud. The attack on me uh, about uh, the uh, uh, alleged advanced knowledge of the hacking of John Podesta's emails is an attempt to deflect from the substance of the emails, just to say it again, I had no advanced knowledge. I've received no information, no emails, no files from WikiLeak. I do have a source. The source tells me that two Wednesdays ago, when WikiLeaks appealed to pull back, it was because Secretary of State John Kerry threatened the Ecuadorian president with grave consequences if the Ecuador government did not silence Assange. Then there was a conference call with every South and Central American president in which they were told that if they did not pressure the government of Ecuador to silence Assange, there would be grave consequences. And I should add, Assange had his internet cut today by a state actor, and so has now implemented a plan, I guess, to dump even more data uh, as a failsafe. So I guess he's gone up a defense condition. He's gone from defense condition three to two is the word we're getting. And again, the New York Times, the Washington Post, they can interview Assange. You just went through an intermediary that went and talked to him. 
Uh, I mean, you've always been honest about that. And so they want to act like you're some horrible criminal and the FBI should come after you. Well, look, uh, as I've said, I would be happy to cooperate with the FBI. They will find nothing, zero. My only connection to Russia is a fondness for Russian vodka. Now, I did do uh, some research on you, as I do this on everybody that I, you know, am I involved in and give truck to. Your only condition is there was a time when there were Russians reaching out. You call the FBI on them. Now, that, I saw that in one newspaper. You want to talk about that? A long time ago. Yeah, 30 years ago, maybe longer, when I was uh, working in Washington for Ronald Reagan, I had a contact from the Russians offering to bribe me for inside information from Reagan's campaign. I went directly to the FBI and reported it. Uh, so uh, this is a canard. There is no connection between uh, me and the Russians. Ironically, of course, of all people to raise this question, Mike Morrell, this guy belongs in prison given his cover-up of the deaths of four brave Americans in Benghazi. That's the guy they roll up. By the way, Morrell should disclose. He is paid cash money by the Clinton campaign to make these false charges. He should be ashamed of himself. Now, now, our October surprises are just the truth. I, I want to talk to you because you're, you know, good with the media, knowing how to get this out. Um, we reached out. I, I, Gary Haven runs cargo planes every week to Haiti. He's been doing it since the earthquake. He's a billionaire. He's given reports are some reports is upwards eighty, ninety million, maybe a hundred million. They all know him there. He lands. They all love him. He's there offloading food. You, it's not staged. We just say. The Clintons, rah, I mean, it's like you've said, the, the devil. The Haitians, we already have video of, the, of their vice presidents and heads of their Senate saying they hate them. But it's like they're the devil there. Riots almost start when you bring them up. Uh, the UN, uh, again, takes control of whatever food they try to give them. He's landing on these dirt airfields doing this. And then we've got people dying. They won't let them get out of, the, uh, out of their areas into the main city, into the hospital. So Gary's having to fly them. People are dying while they're being flown. Uh, they're trying to save little kids that have broken backs and stuff. I mean, when you actually see what the Clintons have done and how much they're hated, this is powerful. And I don't know how we even put this out because the left, everybody, they admit they stole the money. They don't seem to care. Yeah, I, I've seen no stories in the New York Times about the grand theft in Haiti. Uh, last weekend, I marched with a group of Haitians uh, downtown outside the office of New York Attorney General er Eric Schneiderman, the single most corrupt individual in public office today, a shakedown artist, a guy who got caught trying to blackmail Donald Trump for campaign contributions in return to dropping his phony investigation into Trump University. What are the Haitians upset about? The fact that Schneiderman is investigating the Trump Foundation but has no interest in looking into the rape of Haiti by the Clinton Foundation. We're going to be rallying again outside of his office in the near future. I was the only white guy there other than my friend Charles Gortel, uh, and I was proud to be there and stand with these proud, brave people who see their country being destroyed. Let me bring this up to you. You've been, you've been sending me text messages, victory or death. I guess you're getting that from Colonel Travis. What are the real numbers, as close as you can see it, what is the effect? It seems like all this woman stuff, it's been discredited. It turns out they're trying to get jobs. They're trying to get him to visit with them. He has emails. Uh, I mean, but the media won't cover that. So what does he do? Just say smear campaign, ignore it, move on about globalism, jobs, uh, you know, better trade deals. I mean, what does Trump do? But first off, where is Trump right now? I mean, how would you say he's doing? Uh, look, I think that he is probably slightly behind based largely on this media onslaught. I've never seen anything like this in nine presidential campaigns, the media doesn't even pretend to be uh, objective. So for example, the report by CNN that it's illegal for citizens to read the WikiLeaks material, that's a lie. That's a lie, that's false, and they know it. Uh, it, it is very typical, I think, uh, of, of what we're seeing across the board, which is why I continue to believe that the greatest danger is the theft of this election. Now. I'm disappointed, frankly, in the Republicans. The Homeland Security uh, Secretary, Johnson, uh, comes out and says that there's evidence that the Russians plan to hack our elections. The ranking Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, Richard Burr, says that he, he doesn't need proof of that. He'll take Johnson at his word. Alex, there is no 
evidence of this. But None of course, this is their excuse to come in and federalize it. Since you mentioned CNN saying it's illegal, look at WikiLeaks. This is evidence of crime. It's out in the public domain. You have every right to look at it. They're telling you with the arrogance of Cuomo, you have to come to us. You're not allowed to look. It's different. We're media. Anybody can start a blog and say you're media and it's public interest. It's a lie. So, so again, they're really trying to beta test a tyranny where they get a bunch of criminals hired in media that will go along with anything, including rounding us up, folks. That's why this is total war, as Donald Trump said. Uh, here is uh, Chris Como, an embarrassment that this, that this man is an American. He should move to North Korea. Here it is. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. Joining us now, CNN. So you go to him, the great gatekeeper. Here, here's another clip since we mentioned it. Chuck uh, Todd, but we have another one. CNN host blames fire bombing of Republican HQ on Donald Trump. So see, because we're not human. Because Trump supporters are racist. They sprayed Nazi on the building. It's okay to burn it down. That's what the Nazis did to Jews, folks. You dehumanize somebody. This is the rhetoric. This is their plan B. If it looks like Hillary's going to lose, just have all these groups get, get activated by the media and go out and burn everything down. Let's go ahead and play that clip. So the Arizona Republic getting so many death threats over an endorsement is an example of how how overheated the rhetoric is. Another example out of North Carolina today, the firebombing of a local GOP office. Yeah. We have no idea who's done this. We don't know if it's a Republican, a Democrat, a movement. No idea. Could be some sort of extremist, some sort of, some sort of radical. Hopefully we'll get more information soon. But that kind of action is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have the temperature come down on all sides right oh, now. Yeah. Unfortunately, Donald Trump is the lead in terms of raising the temperature at this oh. moment. Donald Trump's the leader of raising the temperature. It's his fault. Other hosts said it was his fault outright. So, again, they're the ones saying racist, Nazi, evil, you know, hate the Mexicans, the end of the world. You can't have Trump. But then when people fight back and say, wow, this is rigged. Oh, how dare you? And it's your fault you got firebombed. Next level brainwashing, uh, Roger Stone. Yeah, look, they don't even uh, pretend to adhere to the journalistic rules. So CNN, Fox, uh, most of the networks carried the attack on me by, uh, by the Clintonites, first by Podesta, then by uh, this fool, Morrell. But it was only NBC who came to me for comment, and to their credit, they posted it and gave me equal time. Um, these are no longer news organizations. These are propaganda arms of the Clinton campaign, uh, and they will make up any lie or suppress any information necessary to try to elect this gravely ill woman whose criminality is oozing out of all these WikiLeaks. Exactly. Next point. Let me ask you this then. Last time you had a little bit of the inside scoop on what you thought was coming in the debate, you were dead on with not shaking the hands, uh, with he, him going on the attack. I know we don't want to tip our hand right now, but I mean, my gut tells me Trump needs to now devastate. He needs to go next level, be calm and focused, ignore whatever they say, and just devastate her on the tainted blood out of Arkansas, on the Haiti situation, uh, on, on, on her abusive women. Uh, just devastate her. I totally agree. I think it's now time for the scorched earth. She has to be exposed as the, as the wanton, vicious uh, criminal that she is. And um, the tactics of her campaign uh, are leaking through to the American people through the WikiLeaks, there will be more major revelations about the criminal actions of Media Matters for America and the money laundering felon, David Brock, later this week, that will blow your mind. Uh, now, when you say felon, because you told me about this off air, I don't know if you wanted to go there yet. Um, I mean, is it, is it okay to start getting into the things? Well, if I look, I don't have any problem with that. I, I'm over speaking. He's a non-convicted felon. The, the money laundering he's involved in is a felony. If anyone on the right did it, if anyone associated with Trump did it, the federal... Well, just like the WikiLeaks show, when Hillary uh, is saying this is illegal, she goes, screw it, just take the money. Sorry, but you're saying yeah. to you it looks like money laundering. Well, uh, there's a terrific series of articles. There's been a detailed complaint filed with the Federal Election Commission. He's mixing nonprofit money with hard federal election dollars. That's money laundering. It's highly illegal. Uh, and as I say, if I did it or you did it, we'd be prosecuted. Sure, but I meant the other thing you told me. That's not time for that yet. No, I, I'd let that uh, I'd let that play out here a little bit. I don't want to step on others' story, but uh, you know there are some major 
even larger revelations coming uh, about boffins. the criminality in the uh, All right, stay there. We'll be back. I was talking to Roger Stone during the break, and he was saying, no, he's still ahead in most of the battleground states, but he might be a little bit behind because of all the demonization, the full court press. And he went on to just say, is the media claiming this hoax that he's done, it's over. The hoax he's done, it's over. Imagine if they said, Hillary's been caught lying in the emails. It confirms felonies. It confirms that she lied to Congress. It's over. It is over. I mean, we have her. It's not like women from 10, 15, 20 years ago saying he touched her leg on an airplane or an elevator. I and mean, you got emails from him this year saying, please come see me. It's, it's real meat and potatoes. It's, it's bona fides. And so regardless of where this goes, the mainstream media has destroyed itself. And we're entering a new era. And Trump is basically, whether he wins or loses, a tombstone on this establishment, the Bush-Clinton dynasty. There's no way she gets in all sick with all this criminality coming out. And she's going to try to take down the press and stuff. I just see disaster. But they might start a war before then. Top Russian ministers believe that the October surprise, concurring with my analysis, is a war with Russia. Roger Stone, what do you think? We're in a tunnel now. It's okay. You're in a tunnel now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, I mean, do you think war with Russia or this big cyber attack to elicit a response by Russia could be the October surprise? Yeah, it's wag the dog. We, we are going out to provoke the Russians uh, to provide an excuse, a pretext for war so that we can uh, try to uh, justify uh, Hillary's election. This is one of the most transparent gambits I've ever seen. I was about to say, very 101. Yes. So what do we do about that? I mean, there's got to be some level of sanity in the government left to stop this. Well, uh, we can start with the, with the fact that Donald Trump must raise it at tomorrow night's debate. In other words... When they say you're, bed, you're in bed with Putin, he needs to say, no, Hillary, you want war. I want detente. You want to, uh, to uh, engage the Russians over Syria, where we have no inherent... And they're fighting al-Qaeda. Exactly. ISIS. Putin and I'd say, what the hell are you doing taking $35 million to give over our uranium to them? I wouldn't do that. You know, you call me a Russian agent because you're one. Yeah, no, look, they're asking us in Syria to choose between Hezbollah and ISIS. We have no inherent interest here. They will drive us to war to steal this election. Meanwhile, this entire meme that is going on in this country, the election's over. It's over. Trump's already lost. He can't possibly win. I've been in this business 40 years. I'm looking at the polling. There is no place that she has an insurmountable lead, and he still leads in a number of keystones. And more WikiLeaks are coming out daily, but regardless... Regardless, the, the, the Google numbers show people aren't concerned about all this 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 made up garbage with women. And I think we should just admit we're doing this to make a point. Don't be deceptive. But we should just put out the fake meme that Hillary uh, is going to resign and that it's official and we have sources because that's what they do. And just keep saying it and have everyone know it's not true. But just have everyone just start saying it and have a meme war with them. Uh, how about how's that oh. sound, Roger? No, my understanding is that Axelrod wants her to step down. So. Well, sure, we can take him saying step down from the debate and expand and say, no, it's step down total. You, you want to just go with that? How about we just do it? We'll reconnect with him. I want to do five more minutes. And uh, David Knight. Is Tell Obama. It's a done deal. Okay, so, so you cut off for a moment. So let's announce. So Hillary is stepping down, correct? Next week. That's what I hear. It's everywhere. Every major Democrat I talk up to tells me that Michelle Obama is stepping in for Hillary Clinton. Because her health condition is so grave and because these disclosures are so damaging. Uh, stay there. Your Skype was cutting up. I want to come back in 70 seconds, give you the full uh, breaking, ladies and gentlemen. Hillary to step down next week. Michelle Obama to step in because of grave conditions. You're hearing it here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Alex Jones with Roger Stone. Hillary is stepping down. We're going to come back with a big announcement uh, right after this straight away, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And there's more. Her... Kathy O'Brien, who says Hillary Clinton raped her as a child, is going to be coming public as well. Uh, the rape victim of Hillary, straight ahead. Man, this is serious. Wow, it's over for Hillary. Rape victim. A young girl. Stay with us. Oh, my God. It's over. I'm done. I'm. All right. Roger Stone is our guest. He is uh, traveling right now, uh, running his via cell phone. He was on Skype. And, you know, the mainstream media keeps saying over and over again that Trump is resigning. There's been an... Uh, intervention he's stepping down it's all over the same usual suspect republican uh, folks that helped ram through 
the bipartisan tyranny keep playing the same trick over and over again. So I have actually heard there's no way Hillary can continue on from the Secret Service, but she's on something she's able to. But the word Roger Stone has got is that it is Michelle Obama, who they're intending to put in next week. So Hillary Clinton's health problems have gotten so bad that sometime next week, reportedly, she's going to be stepping down. So it's very important you get this video once we take it from the live show and post it, send it to all the Democrats you know. Because, again, it's fair to say this because Hillary said nobody died at Benghazi. Right, Roger? Yeah, I mean, look, this is all, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is parody. Uh, this is uh, using their own tactics against them. They continually say things that aren't true, that have no basis in fact. For example, I'm a, an agent for the Russians, and... Uh, that I uh, that I had advanced knowledge of any WikiLeaks hackings, which I didn't, only because back in August I posted on Twitter that John Podesta's uh, business dealings were going to be examined. I didn't hear that from WikiLeaks. I heard it from Paul Manafort, and he knew because he was active in the region at the same time, only he was working for pro-democratic forces. In any event, uh, yeah, I hear I hear that Democrats realize that uh, Senator Tim Kaine is mentally unbalanced. They don't want him to step in, and therefore the party chieftains led by the president, they want Michelle Obama. That's what I hear. Every Democrat I know in New York City is talking about this. Alex. I kind of think that I would be better. I, th I think Michelle ago. would be better than Hillary. She doesn't seem to be as hateful or mentally ill. What do you think? Well, she's certainly better looking, that's for sure. Wow. Well, this is incredible. Uh, do we have any word on when Hillary is stepping down? Yeah. Uh, look, this could happen any instant. This is as realistically as Trump throwing in the towel. I'm sure you read only weeks ago that he was going to be dropping out after the uh, sneak attack uh, by NBC in this Billy Bush case. I spoke to him. He never thought about dropping out. Sure. Well, attack. well, rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated, to quote Mark Twain. But getting serious, what does it mean when Axelrod literally did say that, that she should drop out of the debate? claiming because he's been rude to her or whatever. No, no, no. That, I mean, he, sh he knows she got her clock cleaned. Well, Axelrod is a very shrewd fellow, and he's a very competent Democratic operative. I think he understands how damaged she is as a candidate. Plus, as you know, there is no love between the Obamas and the Clintons. That has not changed. But if, if they can be ridiculous and sarcastic, we can be ridiculous and sarcastic. I think it's a superb way to illustrate the uh, the point. I'm uh, I'm speaking tonight at the Cosmopolitan Club for the Viewpoint Forum, a conservative-oriented uh, uh, discussion group. Well, I'll be signing books. I think I'll go there and announce at 7 o'clock tonight in Manhattan at the Cosmopolitan Club that Hillary's dropping out. She's going to be replaced by Michelle Obama. Yeah, I'm going to put a special video report out on this right now, and I'm just going to go with it. And, and, you know, they now are doing whole body transplants, brain into a new body. Uh, Matt Drudge joked about her in a jar. Uh, why not just say she's going to drop out for health reasons and have a whole body transplant next week? Anything's possible. Absolutely. Why not be like CNN and MSNBC? Uh, you know, the truth is we're illustrating them by being absurd. We don't literally mean this, but we're going to do it as satire. Roger Stone, thank you so much. Look forward to speaking to you again. 21 days left, my friend. Great to be with you, Alex, as always. All right, I'm going to come back. Rob Dew is bristling to get on air. He's got a bunch of clips he was telling me he wants to get to, special reports and more. We haven't covered fourth hour straight ahead, but I will hand the old baton to Rob Dew, our news director, straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. And we are now 21 days out from this incredibly important historical election. Abdu is going to be taking over here in just a few minutes. And I realize that I get in here like a rabid chihuahua getting wound up before I come on the air. And I do a decent job, but I become almost like just a barking, rabid, you know, angry person because <coughs> this is so real. I mean, the globalists are so evil. We have their own emails admitting it. We already knew it. This just all confirms it. And they're real villains. They sit around talking about screwing over poor people and <laughs> how they're bad. When you study criminology, that's what real mentally ill criminals do. 
not just criminals because they were pressured into it or criminals because they were starving and stole a loaf of bread. I mean, real criminal mindsets that hate people. And they see people like us that have conscience, that care. They see us as weak. You know, I'm not weak because I have nerve endings and can't, you know, stick my hand in the fire and just keep it there without pain. Those are there so that I can navigate the world better. And I'll be honest with you. I see the general public stunted, mutated, dumbed down, unhealthy, ugly, on average, really stuff falling apart fast. Every metric shows it. It's not just my jaundice eye. And then I see the establishment, and they're even worse. Like a bird on top of dunghill. Surveying its largesse. <sighs> and it really freaks me out. And I think about being a man in the arena. I know I ask this all the time. You guys reprint me, man in the arena. Thanks. Great crew. And I think about how to see Trump, even in, in the arena more than I am, losing so much, growing as he learns, legitimately not out to get us, and just being hit with every lie, every deception, every twisted piece of info. And I just hope humanity breaks the spell. I hope humanity has already hit bottom and we start coming back up and then we wake up that communism and totalitarianism doesn't work. Thank you, Nico. Because I generally have faith in humanity. But sometimes I really wonder. Because people that are followers and weak-minded, they get into groupthink and they think because they're agreeing with what most people are saying that somehow that makes them powerful and effective. No, if you're in a sick and dying culture and then you're going along with the general consensus, you're a fool. I mean, it's one thing if you're in Nazi Germany in 1942 and you don't know which way the war is going to go and half your family's in the military and you know Hitler's bad, you didn't like him to begin with, but if you cross them, they're going to put you in a forced labor camp. It's one thing to kind of do your job and keep your head down. That's, that's, that's cowardly, but I get it. But now, and by the way, most Germans by, by 1941 or 42 did not like what was going on. They've done the interviews. They've checked the metrics. But they went along with it. And more than a third of them died. More than a third of, you know, more than a third of Germany died. 20% of Russia died. I just bring those numbers up because when General Milley, the head of the army, says, this war is going to be as big as World War II. We've not seen anything like this since World War II. Dude's going to air the special report at the bottom of the hour. I study history. I study the military. I find it interesting. They don't talk like that, folks, unless you're about to be in a giant war. And then I look who's captaining this war, an old, sick, evil crime boss woman who has to have Secret Service go, it's okay, it's okay, keep talking. She's like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's who they got. And then all these weird Effeminate, I don't want to call them effeminate because that insults women. Women aren't like that. Weird clown men. I don't care if they're gay or heterosexual. There's just this Nelly giggling about evil. Everything's funny. Let's screw everyone over. It's just like, whoa, I don't want to be around you. I mean, I would never associate with you. Now you're running my life. And I'm not saying I wouldn't associate with a guy who was acting like a Nelly. There's plenty of guys like that that are great, hardworking, good people. I mean, there's just this certain type of wimpy guy who I guess wants to do evil because it makes them feel powerful. And all I want to do is club their brains out. I'd love to get in a pen, legally and lawfully, like four of these wimps, throw clubs down on the ground. I got a club, and I'm like, you know what? Let's find out how big a man you are right now. You want to screw somebody over? You like to gang up on people? Do it to me. And I'll just be honest. I mean, as a man, that's how I feel towards these people. Bunch of hyenas laughing, screwing people over? I'm tired of them. And I get really upset when it looks like Trump's going to lose. The, the internal polls are, he's way ahead, but they know the fix is in. 
Trump's got to be way ahead, just like Enrich said. That's the inside baseball. He's got to be way ahead to win because they're going to steal it, folks. Only a landslide can beat him, and Trump said that. You know, I'm not like one of these, and I don't talk about myself because I don't talk about myself. It's just it's an allegory of everything, especially for media matters and the White House people that listen and the Hillary people that analyze every word I'm saying. I understand you'd be fired in a minute if you didn't play ball, but you know the stuff about her having convulsions is real. You know how evil she is is real. You know her working for foreign powers is real. You think you're just cozied up to something powerful because it'll get you ahead in life. These are the times when you've got to make the right decision and leak information. Who needs to have it leaked via the Internet? There's other ways to get information out. Do what's right. Don't believe your own hype. Don't smoke your own dope. Hillary really is evil. In the short and midterm, if I want to be more successful, personally, I would want Hillary to get in. But I don't think like that. Donald Trump gets in, our fight's just begun, and we've got to really hold his feet to the fire and fight the special interest, and they're already getting ready to implode the economy, they're going to blame us. I mean, shining on to Trump, I put on all the risk. I, I did everything because I believed, my gut told me he was real, you're seeing he's real, warts and all. And this is a really historical time to be alive right now. If I was like everybody else, I'd just sit on the fence and bash both candidates and act like I was holier than thou. Or I'd go further and be like Glenn Beck and, you know, come out for Hillary. Because they've said they're shutting the media down in the next year or so. So that's kind of the catch-22. Yeah, we'll get a bigger audience if Hillary gets in, but she's coming after the media. And listen... At a subconscious level, I kind of fantasize about that because America kind of deserves whatever it gets at this point. All of us, the, the 50 million abortions or 55 million and all the corruption and the human animal chimeras and all the wars and backing Al-Qaeda to murder Christians everywhere. I, I mean, America wants to go along with this. Well, we should taste a little bit of it. Except I realize there's still so many good people that have been awake, they don't deserve it. Another sick part of me, kind of, you know, Hillary wants to shut the media down. I'll fight the good fight, try to stop it, but okay. Man, I've run the race. I've done it. I've All the proof's there. All the facts are out. World government, tyrannical, anti-human. If you don't care and if you don't get involved, then this is on you. This is something that we deserve. And so I'm making peace with that. I just know this. Trump's a fighting chance, and he's a sign of nationalism. But you know what? We might be too far gone, folks. And America's just been an idea. It's had all its big problems, but it was better than other countries because for a little short time it had more freedom than other countries. And that's why the social engineers, I'm going to skip this break, have spent all their time trying to tear down that idea because they can't compete with real liberalism and free open society and free association. They can't deal with the liberalism that came out of the Renaissance and England and that Europe banned slavery and that Europe led the world in technology and that Christianity was at the heart of that with common law. The elite of the world don't want English common law and renaissance, but also some of the better, older Judaic teachings, not the more modern ones, not the Babylonian Talmud, but the older ones. And, and that is a big influence. People say, I don't want to hear Judeo-Christian values. That's a bunch of you know brainwashing by the blah. I mean, that is part of our culture. Just get that straight. There are a lot of elites that don't want to say everybody's human and then raise them to that level. There are a lot of elites that don't want that technology to be deployed to the people, cultural technology. They really think you can sit up on the hill over a slum and be better than those people. All you've done is brought yourself down a level. I bring you up three levels. I bring myself up even more. Quite frankly, I, I figured this out at a spiritual level. I'm almost, I'm greedy and arrogant when it comes to the fact that I'm going to be noble. I mean, it, it, it is almost a peacocking thing that, that, that I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't get off on screwing people over, I don't get off on victory over my enemies. I get off on separating them from their quarry, but I don't get off on watching them fall into piles of garbage. And again, I talk about myself because 
this is a model of success against the enemy. This is what they fear. For all, my, for all our problems in InfoWars, we're real. We care about freedom. We care about everybody. We want to promote real justice. And they're a bunch of nasty people that are using very old technologies of control in both parties to overthrow and dominate and annihilate society. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of positive things, but the thing that really upsets me the most is watching what's left of the MSM line up like organized soldiers and commit crimes against freedom in this country, crimes against journalism, crimes against individuals, crimes against property, crimes against humanity. People always overuse the Nazi you know, analogies, but the Nazis followed orders, the trains were on time, people did what they were told, that's why it was a very hard enemy to fight. And I got to say, for our media, our MSM, Fox to a great extent is added to that now, they show German military precision in attacking the American people and in engaging in deception. But with the Germans, it was more mechanical. There's an added, like, glee to it. And the Germans had some of that same glee, but there's a glee to this. Like a ceremonial sacrifice of America, and then they waddle around and roll around in the blood of the country. It suckled them. And, and then just celebrate publicly. It's, it's very infantile. And that's the thing. It's organized. It's criminal. It's focused. But then it's just totally given over to dishonor. I mean, I think about just second nature being an honorable person. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. And then I look at these people and I realize they're so divorced from the human species. They have no idea that the greatest value in their life is actually finding people you can trust. There's no honor amongst these people. They're totally unhappy. They treat each other like crap. It's all admitted. They're absolutely alone. They have the highest rates of suicide, the lowest rates of giving. They are just these scared, twisted pseudo-intellectuals that try to organize themselves into criminal groups to then go out and commit crime while spewing propaganda about how good they are all day. Imagine if your political god was Hillary Clinton. I mean, what does that say about these people? And they go, oh, look at Trump, a womanizer with orange hair. <laughs> he never said he didn't like women. If he just said he was Mr. Perfect and then got caught doing something, I'd be concerned. He never even pretended. He says stuff that's so truthful and won't BS people when the politicians are telling him to. That's what they can't stand. That's why they're scared, folks. He's going to get in there and learn about everything that's happening. And then the only danger is fascism because he's going to want, and we're going to want, to arrest so many of these people. They have to get trials, and it can't get out of hand. But I'll tell you, you steal $2 billion from people starving, you need to really, really pay severely for thousands of dead people, over 10,000 alone, just from one operation. You fund al-Qaeda to take over and then rename it ISIS and they kill hundreds of thousands of people and engage in crimes that are just unspeakable. You need to pay for that. You launch these illegal wars, you kill a million Iraqis with sanctions, you need to pay for it. And I mean bipartisanly. And that's why the Republicans are fighting so hard, because they're just as bad as Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and all the rest of them. They know, and they know Trump has never been part of any of it. Trump was against NAFTA and GATT. Trump was against the Iraq War. I've analyzed Trump. Trump has a sense of justice, and he thinks he's the underdog, because quite frankly, he comes from blue-collar roots, and he's all about people not beating him. And he, he, he ties into the whole Americana idea of taking down the establishment and of not having a bunch of pomp and circumstance. He only uses pomp and circumstance as marketing because he knows that's what the public wants. Donald Trump can't stand it.
Oh, those are the big Donald Trump secrets. And the enemy knows that. And he wants to be the superstar. What leader isn't narcissistic to that level who breaks the new world order, who smashes it? He absolutely admires Nigel Farage. His body language, the Farage, is worshipful. Trump wants to be part of history. Trump wants to be on the good guys team. Trump's been his whole life around those demonic, skexy New York globalists. He doesn't want to be with them. He wants to be with you. He can easily shoot his mouth off about Russia, shut all that down. He knows Russia's done nothing to us. He won't sit there and trade his credibility. They go, oh, he's enamored with Putin. Enamored with, yeah, Putin kicked the New World Order out. Nigel Farage is starting to do it. We're doing it. That's history. That's good. That's honorable. That's what we should all want. I want to see Mexico kick the globalists out. I want Mexico to be filthy rich, beautiful country. I wish it was better than the U.S. I'd move down there. I want to run away from slums and poverty and crime and death, not brown people. I want Africa to be wealthy, Eastern Europe to be wealthy. Russia to be successful. I want humanity to thrive. So does Donald Trump. We want renaissance. We want prosperity. I want you to be successful. I want to see you successful. Hillary Clinton wants you poor because she wants to look down on you. America is about prosperity for everybody. And it's an idea that nobody can stop if you simply take it in your hands and kick these parasites out. These parasites come in every race, color, and creed. And every spot, but they all got the same spirit and the same soul. And they're pissed to see you successful. And to them, Donald Trump is a nightmare, a nightmare monster. All right, I'm going to throw the break, bring Rob doing. He's got reports to get to and a lot more here today, riding shotgun with us. Uh, briefly, because I didn't plug in the last hour, and that's how we fund the operation. Uh, we've got a bunch of specials running right now 25% off Brain Force, the amazing nootropic. Should be 50, 60 bucks. It's it's $22 right now. Amazing deal. Try it out today. Hillary for Prison is being sold at cost. It's the end of the run. They're almost sold out. $9.95. We also are selling Hillary for Prison bumper stickers at cost. 100 of them are $17. And we're extending for one day. We're extending this for a week The because uh, it just started the brain force. But we're going to extend the uh, sleep aid knockout, which again, I'll explain. Normal. Melatonin of the same dose is $15 to $19 for the same quality. Ours is $19 and has eight other ingredients like valerian root, L-tryptophan, you name it. So it's a huge discount. Okay, it'd be like 50, 60 bucks to get all these together at the same dose, but with different bottles. That's why it's a great deal. Knockout, try it today. But 25% off, and, and, and by the way, Knockout has a 25% uh, off as well, but that ends. $14.95. Uh, Brain Force is, what, 22 bucks right now? It'd be a good price at 50 bucks. Again, we normally only mark it up uh, 100%. It's uh, only marked up 50% right now. That's what we do. We mark stuff up 100%. We have Biome Defense out right now. Uh, great uh, in two different strengths. A great probiotic. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And your purchase makes it all possible. And you know we're dedicated to telling the truth. You see the enemy flipping out constantly worldwide. We know their attack plan. We... Or opposing him as best we can. Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. I'm Alan Jones signing off. We'll go follow some reports. Rob Dew is coming out of the gates straight ahead. Please spread the word. They want to shut this down for a reason. Don't take it for granted. Get the free app at InfoWars.com forward slash app. All right, Rob Dew here with the fourth hour of Overdrive here at InfoWars.com forward slash show. If you're listening to this on the radio and you'd like to watch what's going on, so we're about to throw to a pretty a fantastic video that Alex produced over the weekend talking about a story that is getting zero coverage in the mainstream media here in the United States. They'd rather spoon feed you issues about what Donald Trump said or who you might have touched or who you might have kissed, but not about the upcoming World War III that looks like it's impending at this point. I want to go to a couple articles before we go to this amazing video that Alex produced over the weekend. Look, I shot two videos with Alex on Friday and I thought he was kind of done. He came back on Saturday, shot more, and then back on Sunday and shot even more. The man is working like a real man. I'm not going to say like a demon. That's how Hillary works. Here we go from Paul Joseph Watson, Kremlin insider. War might even 
uh, begin even before U.S. elections, urges uh, citizens to stockpile cans of food. And this is uh, Sergei Markov. He's a member of the Civic Chamber, a Moscow-based institution, said he's buying 200 cans of pork to be ready for a potential crisis. Right there. We had some canned bacon here the other day. It was kind of, not it didn't taste like the bacon that I eat, but you know what? If you're in a situation where you're stuck underground for a few weeks while the nuclear fallout is uh, is overhead, you're going to eat anything you can. And it, you have to ask yourself at this point, too, are you stockpiled? Do you have storable food? Do you have water filters? Do you have uh, I, uh, potassium iodine to take care of radiation in your thyroid gland? you got to think about all these things, especially now. Here, here's from the Daily Mail. Turkey warns that World War III is inevitable if the Syrian conflict continues because Americans and Russia, America and Russia will come to a point of war. Well, what do we discuss over the weekend? That Joe Biden's come out and said we're going to be launching cyber attacks against Russia. Everybody's talking about how Russia has, Russia's the one who has hacked uh, the uh, accounts of John Podesta and put that information out to WikiLeaks. And uh, we've got a Wayne Matson article. And I'm not even going to get into this because he's going to be interviewed tonight by Liam McAdoo for the Nightly News. Report, UFO hunters, not Russians, hack Podesta. And we had a prominent UFO hunter ended up dead over the weekend in Poland. And he said investigated if something happens and he put out some cryptic messages before he died. So is it possible? Podesta came out and started talking about his interest in UFOs. Maybe he was being hacked by these people and then they turned over what they had to WikiLeaks. I've actually got a couple of recent leaks here that I'm going to read after this video, so stay tuned for that. But let's go to this video now from Alex Jones talking about the big story in the world that they're talking about everywhere but the United States. They want you concerned about Donald Trump's orange hair and who he might have kissed. Here's that report. The information that I'm about to relay to you is the most grave that I've ever reported in my 21 years on air. It is so Armageddon in nature that I find it hard to believe this is actually happening in the year 2016. The United States, hijacked by globalist forces, has openly in the last week declared de facto war against Russia. Well, we sent a message yet to Putin. We're sending a message. The United States military will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. The message he'll know said it. That he'll know it. It'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. We could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. Future high-end war between nation states and great powers, very highly lethal, unlike anything our army has experienced, at least since World War II. So a message is going to be sent. Will the public know it? I hope not. We're going to get to the de facto declaration of war and the preparations for physical war. And what the head of the army says will have as high a casualty level as World War II in a moment. But first, the background that's undisputed. Russia only has two military bases outside of its country. It's not expansionist. It's fighting radical Islam around the world and should be an ally of the United States. And many of our top generals and admirals and others have been on record saying that fact. The threat is radical Islam and China, not Russia. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia because we could fight ISIS together as an example. The reason the globalists are so upset at Trump is they know he's being advised by the former head of defense intelligence, General Flynn, who exposed the fact that Obama and Hillary were expanding ISIS and Al-Qaeda worldwide three years ago. You are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it. But who wasn't listening? I think the, I think the administration. 
The administration turned a blind eye to your analysis. I don't know if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al Qaeda, well, and the Muslim Brotherhood. A willful decision to do what they're doing. The multinational corporations that brag at the Davos Forum that they've hijacked Europe and the United States and many other Western countries are a multinational outside force, basically taking over our nations and colonizing us with their world government system. So they need to have an outside threat to fool nationalists to give up their sovereignty to globalism in the name of protecting nationalism. That's why when the UK pulls out of the unelected dictatorial EU, mainstream media claims the Russians are behind it. That's why when Donald Trump and myself and others call for restoring our borders and doing better trade deals and not ceding our authority to the TPP, they claim we're Russian agents. Because Russia itself is pulling out of the New World Order. The UK is doing it, and so are we. So if you're a foreign group taking a country over, what do you do? You start pointing fingers at the patriots internally who are trying to save the country and claim they're foreign Ruski agents. By midsummer, we had seen WikiLeaks, DC Leaks, and other organizations dump hundreds of thousands of pages of hacked emails on the web showing the organized crime operation going on between the Democrats, the mainstream media, and the foreign banks that literally own and control them. So to divert the public from the crimes they'd committed, they doubled down and said, see, the Russians are involved in taking over our elections and manipulating things, but they showed no evidence. By late August, Hillary Clinton was 10 to 15 points in national polls behind Donald Trump. They were panicking. I began to see rumblings from the UN and the EU that they were going to send 10 times the number of observers they normally would to oversee our elections. That's why I went on air and said, we need to look at the attempt by Hillary to steal this election. She stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders, the sky's the limit. Obama came out two weeks later and basically said I was crazy, election fraud didn't exist. Then, two weeks after that, they announced that they were going to federalize the elections to keep them safe from right-wingers and the Russians. Then, on September 1st, Democratic Party nominee goes on national television and says that if we think Russia has launched any type of cyber attack on the U.S., that we'll launch a cyber attack on them and maybe even use physical military force. You've seen reports. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. So we've got to step up our game, make sure we are well defended and able to take the fight to those who go after us. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic and military responses. On cue. For the next month, the leading story every night is that Russia is taking over the elections, that Russia has spies everywhere, and that Donald Trump works for them. Then, on October 7th, the director of national intelligence, getting his information from the CIA, comes out and says, we know it's the Russians, they have cyber attacked us officially, but gave no evidence. Then a week later, Vice President Joe Biden, in mafioso style, goes on Meet the Press and tells Russia, we're going to send you a message with a massive cyber attack. We've got incredible capabilities. We're going to show you. Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. We have the capacity to do it. And uh, the message he'll know said it. that he'll know it. And it'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Uh, the capacity to do, to fundamentally all their election is, is, is not what people think. And uh, I tell you what, to the extent that they do, we will be proportional in what we do. And uh, at, at, uh, So a message is going to be sent. Will the public know it? I hope not. And this is where the critical bureaucratic declaration of war outside of Congress's authority comes in. Because we have the director of national intelligence, we have the intelligence agency heads, we have Mrs. Clinton, we have Joe Biden, we have Obama meeting with top generals just two days ago talking about war with Russia in preparation and saying their new doctrine is if you cyber attack us, we will cyber attack you and or 
both hit you with a military response in Hillary Clinton's own words. And guess what? That's the new NATO doctrine they announced a month ago, that they may hit Russia first, or if any cyber attacks, any hacking of any type, come from the massive country of Russia, that they will take that as an act of war. From any angle you look at, we are now officially at war with Russia, and this is surpassing anything that ever happened in the Cold War, according to even mainline analysts. And we have proxy wars on the border of Russia in Ukraine and in Russia's backyard in Syria. And we have top generals in Congress, like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dumford, saying, look, you're asking me to put up a no-fly zone and shoot down Russian aircraft. They're going to attack us back. That is an act of war. Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. In summation, why is all of this happening? Well, about a week ago, General Milley, the head of the army, explained why. If you try to have the Brexit, or if Russia tries to pull out of the New World Order, or if patriots worldwide support the collapse of the EU because it's unelected, our military, working for the globalist, will hit you harder than you've ever been hit before. That's the message. And Russia is being scapegoated for the unraveling of the new world order and world government. The United States military, despite all our challenges, despite our op tempo, despite everything we've been doing, will stop you and we will beat you harder than you've ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. Other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea went to school on us. They closely watched how we fought in 91 and 03. They studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, and our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing the militaries today to avoid our strengths in hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. First, not surprisingly, is that will be highly lethal, very highly lethal, unlike anything our army has experienced, at least since World War II. The world is in global turmoil. Major banks are going under on a routine basis. The biggest bank in Germany, Deutsche Bank, is teetering on the edge of collapse and will make Lehman Brothers look tame in comparison. And historically, when major collapses begin to happen, Countries and empires tend to start wars as a political distraction so they can blame the international financial crises on the war itself and not on their own failed policies. And of course, they want to influence the election here. Every globalist publication from the Washington Post to the Financial Times of London to The Economist admits that with Brexit, pulling out of the euro and with Russia pulling out of globalism, what's happening here with nationalism and Trump, they're on their last legs and they've got to prop Hillary up. She is their Stalingrad. She is their Waterloo. If she falls there, they believe in their own words, their whole system will completely unravel. Well, I got news for them. It's already unraveling. But they believe that if they can trick Russia into a physical war or cyber attack Russia and get Russia to respond back, they can then pull false flags during the election and use that as an excuse to blame Russia for any election problems. Then Homeland Security has to come in to federalize it further to protect the vote. The good news is, across the political spectrum, the intelligentsia is really waking up to the fact that we have a very dangerous criminal group in control of our country that wants to stay in control and who might even start a nuclear war to do so. And that's why the head of the Green Party and others have come out and said that Hillary Clinton is much more dangerous than Donald Trump because she says that she wants a war with Russia, she wants a war with Iran and others. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly from her declared policy in Syria. So I won't sleep well at night if Donald Trump is elected, but I sure won't sleep well at night if Hillary Clinton is elected. The ball is now in your court. History is repeating itself in a very, very dangerous fashion. The criminal elements that have hijacked our country are trying to start physical wars with Russia and others. They're opening our borders up, bringing in jihadis here to destabilize things as well. They're taking over our election processes to, quote, protect it from the Russians, even as they announce they're going to launch a massive cyber attack against Russia in retaliation 
for something they can't even prove Russia did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a critical time, probably one of the most critical times in all of human history and development. It's now time to hit a knee and start asking God to basically open more people's eyes up and that we would have peace on this planet and not thermal nuclear war. The people are ready to be awakened. Please take this special report, email it to members of Congress, to local talk show hosts, and to mainstream media, and say it's time to wake up and turn this country and the world around from the brink of Armageddon. Now, let's just illustrate this real quick. Go to my screen right here. World War III Russia, you hit all. Not one mainstream media news source talking about it here in the United States. All over the world they're talking about it, but not here. Now let's go to, same thing, World War III Russia hit news. Even less results, nobody talking about it in the United States. It's a complete blackout. The only place you're getting this type of analysis and news is from alternative media and Infowars.com. And we're the leader in alternative media, I can tell you that right now. You're not gonna hear, and you're not gonna hear this on, on fake alternative media like the Young Turks. No, nobody's talking about this. So you need to wake up and spread the word about what's going on, okay? We'll be back, one more segment of the fourth hour. I'm your host, Rob Dew, Infowars.com forward slash show is the website where you can go to watch this in video. For, it's a free stream, spread it, spread it out now before it's too late, before they take away your internet. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com, coming to you live from the Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines. This is our final segment here with you today. It's been an amazing show. We had Roger Stone on earlier, and uh, yesterday he put out a tweet at 831. John Kerry has threatened the Ecuadorian president with grave consequences for Ecuador if Assange is not silenced. And so what happened? Well, his internet got cut off. And nobody knew who it was. They said a state had cut it off. Now WikiLeaks... 25, 26 minutes ago now, we can confirm Ecuador cut off Assange's internet access Saturday at 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, shortly after the publication of Clinton's Goldman Sachs speeches. So you got John Kerry running around like a hatchet man trying to keep people shut up and silenced because they don't want the word getting out. And this just completely illustrates the fact that we are on top of this story better than anyone else right here. You know, sometimes Roger Stone says stuff, and I can't even believe it. But here he is the day before, and then WikiLeaks comes out and says it was Ecuador. And now, on the show today, Roger Stone said it looks like Hillary's going to drop out next week. So we'll see if that happens. But totally, totally incredible. Um, and this just brings me up to uh, this Wednesday. We're going to be going 11 straight hours, 13 straight hours. I'm sorry. October 19th, starting at 11 a.m., we're going to go to midnight. And that's the day of the final debate. The final debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Let's bring up the graphic, please. There it is. Live feed analysis, 13 hours of coverage starts at 11 a.m. You can find the free stream at Infowars.com forward slash show. Or you can go to our YouTube channel. Or you can download our free app and watch it on your smartphone wherever you're at. Infowars.com forward slash app. Enforce.com forward slash show for the free stream or check out our YouTube channel, which is approaching 1 billion views. And you know that pisses off the globalists. Let's look at these two emails. Here's one to John Podesta. It says, I mean, they will go, they will go after the deleting of private emails, but at some point they will just run out of steam, especially as they see minimal electoral consequence. So they want you not to worry about these emails and they say, oh, they'll, they'll bitch about it for a little bit. But then after a while, they'll just give up and forget about it. And uh, you know what, people aren't forgetting about it. In fact, we had an article last week from Paul Joseph Watson. Google Trends shows internet users far more interested in WikiLeaks than Trump allegations. That was October 14th. And you can see the blue line here represents WikiLeaks. Okay, here's Trump's allegations way, way down below. The only people that care about this are Democratic operatives who are passing it back and forth on their Facebook. Look at the interest in WikiLeaks. So much interest, John Kerry had to go threaten the Ecuadorian embassy. And so they cut off his internet. And nobody knew who it was until WikiLeaks just came out with it. Roger Stone said it the day before, then WikiLeaks came out and said, what's confirmed, Equ the Ecuador cut off our internet access. Now, here's an email to Cheryl Mills, Huma, and John Podesta. 
It says, to be clear, there are and will likely remain only two parties who can release the full 55K. So now they're saying there's 55,000 emails. The state and us. Nobody else will have them. Gowdy will only end up with what's relevant to his committee, which won't grow that much beyond what he has. Probably not get anywhere close to 500. So I don't know if this shows Republicans colluding with the Democrats on just cherry picking certain issues, which I don't think it shows that, but it shows that there's 55,000 emails, not just 33,000. There it is right there in the email, 55K. 55,000 emails they decided they had to hide from you. It's not all yoga poses, people. It's not lobster bisque recipes. It's how they're trying to screw you. That's what it's all about. So thank you for joining us today on The Alex Jones Show. I've been your host, Rob Dew, for the fourth hour. Tonight, we have the InfoWars Nightly News starting at 7 p.m. Central. You can find all that more at InfoWars.com and InfoWars.com forward slash show for the free streams. Thanks for watching.